championship quality football as the Giants meet the Saints. Once dominant, the Giants' defense must rekindle the fire that made them the league's most feared group, especially in linebacker. Harry Carson is on injured reserve, but still here is All-Pro Lawrence Taylor. The Giants must play like they used to, with reckless abandon. The Giants must also intimidate, and tonight, with their division lead and reputation on the line, the Giants must win. The Giants had the best linebackers. The Saints have the best linebackers. Start with Sam Mills, 5'9", 225. And Vaughn Johnson, by far the team's leading tackler. Throw in Ricky Jackson and Pat Swilling on the outside, and you have the league's best group. All but Jackson are under 30, and there is quality depth behind the starters. The key to a stingy defense, the Saints may keep their distinction as the best for a long time. This is the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, and we have a sellout crowd of nearly 70,000 to watch a pair of title contenders, the New York Giants and the New Orleans Saints. The Eagles took a half-game lead in the NFC East today. They beat Phoenix. The Giants need a win to stay in a tie for first. In the West, the 49ers won, but the Rams were upset, and a safe win tonight would preserve a two-game lead in the division. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, along with Joe Theismann, and it's great to have you with us tonight on ESPN. The New York Giants have gone from a team with tremendous offensive battles to a team that has to throw the football to gain yards. Well, that was all right with Phil Simms, but Phil Simms is not going to be in there tonight. That's right, Mike. Phil Simms came out earlier tonight, tried out his bruised shoulder. There is nothing wrong mechanically with his arm, but there is a deep bruise. There is a little bit of swelling. He's unable to go. Now the burden falls on Jeff Hostetler's shoulders, who's played two foot Ball games, both against the Philadelphia Eagles. So he's had some war time, I guess you might say, against an Eagle defensive football team, but he's never started. I'll guarantee you tonight that young man has got butterflies the size of 747s in his stomach. Now, neither one of these clubs likes its chances to make the playoffs as a wild card contender. Both of them feel that they have to win their division. And, Joe, there are a lot of other similarities with these teams, too. There really are, Mike. When you take a real close look at this football team, they truly are mirror images. Both of them have very strong linebacking cores that really lead their defense. Neither quarterback puts up the big numbers but is very consistent. Their wide receivers are very good but nothing exceptional as far as speed goes. And their running game is very hard-pounding and consistent. Where you do see the difference is in the kicking game. And that's because the Saints have the best kicker in football in Morton Anderson. Anderson, who averages 94% of his kicks under 40 yards. They certainly do, Joe, and there is Morton Anderson, and he will kick. Neil Gugamos, one of the deep receivers, along with Wayne Haddix. We're underway. And Morton Anderson, as usual, kicks it deep into the end zone. That's the 16th straight Anderson kick at home that the opponents will start at the 20 or inside. Phil Simms will not be playing tonight without a consistent running game. All the, pr all the uh, pressure falls on Jeff Hostetler, the five-year man out of West Virginia. His biggest weapon has been Lionel Manuel already with 56 catches compared to 30 of all of last year. For two seasons now, the offensive line has been a problem. Bart Oates at 265, one of the league's most consistent and efficient centers. Little Joe Morris gets the call, first play. Jackson bumps him out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Saints defense has been injured up front. Bruce Clark, the seven-year veteran, starts at the nose for Tony Elliott, who's hampered by a groin pull. The strength of this team is at linebacker. Four outstanding players, including Sam Mills, the defensive signal caller, and a wicked hitter. Dave Wehmer, the veteran in the secondary, they have 14 interceptions, but that is well off their league-leading 30 of a year ago. 
Ross Stetler, as Joe told you, has played in two NFL games in his five-year career. Morris again. Not much. Vaughn Johnson hit him at the 24, along with Jackson. And what you really start to see there, Mike, is the ability of the New Orleans Saints linebackers to give you a little bit of a hole and then close it very quickly. They have great team speed, and they really pride themselves on pursuit and getting to the ball. If you were Jeff Hostetler right now, you would not want to have to throw your first pass in third and five, would you? Yeah, I would, because I want to get my first completion. I really want to get one under my belt so I can relax a little bit. He really hasn't gotten into the game yet. George Adams checks in as the single setback. He's number 33. Five-man rush. Hostetler throws incomplete. Intended for manual. Dave Waymer was right there. Talking to the Giant coaches, they felt like they had to try and get the ball quick up the field to the receivers because they don't want the New Orleans Saints to settle back into their zones. There was an indication of one right there. Buford with a low line drive punt for Mel Gray, number two in the conference with punt returns. Doesn't get much of a return this time back to the 46. A return of nine after a line drive 38-yard punt from Maury Buford. Bobby Hebert brings the Saints on the field, having another excellent year, twice as many touchdown passes as interceptions. His favorite target has been Eric Martin. He, with four more catches, he'll lead the NFL and is closing in on team records for catches and yardage. The offensive line banged up. Jim Dombrowski, one of only two players to start all year. He is having an excellent season for New Orleans at left tackle. Keith Jackson caught five balls today, so Martin needs four to regain the NFL lead in receptions. A bear play action first play. Dumps it off to tight end Hobie Brenner. He's got a first down still on his feet. Fumbled the football, but out of bounds at the 40. 12 yard gain. Up front for the Giants, Leonard Marshall, not the dominant rusher he once was, but he still leads the down line with five sacks. Even though he was out the first months of the season, Lawrence Taylor has 11 and a half sacks. He's second in the league. Harry Carson on injured reserve leaves a big hole. The starters in the secondary have only four interceptions between them. Eight-year veteran Kenny Hill has been shut out. Reuben Mays gets his first carry, picks up maybe a yard. Kenny Hill came up from the secondary to get in on. You know, with uh, Carl Banks having an injured shoulder, that burden falls on Johnny Cook to play that outside linebacker position. And you saw the first pass was a play-action pass right to where Banks would have been. So they're going right in an area with the tight end versus the linebackers who can't get back into the drops. Bill Parcells concerned about his ball club. He feels he's just got to win the division. Probably not going to make it as a wild card. Hey, <laughs> there with time. Hits Hill to the 25. Another Saints first down. Hill's the inside guy. Now he makes his move on Kenny Hill down the field and just settles in the hole. What's happening is the Saints are utilizing that play-action pass to force the giant linebackers to take a step forward while the secondary is taking a step backward. And there is that soft area between the linebackers and the secondary where you can stop receivers. Both of these teams have some real injury problems. Craig Haywood not playing for the Saints. Buford Jordan came out two plays ago, the only other fullback for the holding onto his shoulder. A bear under a blitz and throws it out of bounds. That's just a good decision by Bobby Abair. Felt the pressure. He knows he's in an area where he can protect three points. This is part of the team concept of the New Orleans Saints. If you know you're in a place where you give Mort Anderson a shot at a field goal, don't take a sack. Try not to take a penalty to take yourself out. That's Brad Edelman, the starting left guard. Limping off the field, the Saints have been banged up on the offensive line. They already lost two tackles. Stan Brock and Bill Ponce. Joel Hilgenberg comes in at the left guard spot. 
play action. Taylor knocked it away. Giants football. The Giants take over at their 25. Perry Williams, the right corner, picked it up after Lawrence Taylor knocked it loose. Yeah, and just when you talk about a guy protecting the ball, right? I mean, exactly. You know, it's like the old guy with the free throw. This guy never misses free throws. Well, here's a case from the right side of your screen. Abair with the play action fake to Ruben Mays. Now, Taylor just has a ton of speed and swats the ball at Abair's hand, and it's like it's on the ground, and there it is. Coming up with the intercept or with the fumble recovery, Perry Williams, Johnny on the spot. And Joe, as you said, this is something the Giants defense is going to have to do like the old days. They're going to have to carry this ball club with Sims out and flags are down every game. Offense, ball start, 66, 89. Five yards, William Bill Roberts, the uh, very talented but inconsistent left tackle for the Giants. And this is the problem that you face playing in the Superdome because there's 70,000 people here and every one of them has got their vocal cords turned up to create a problem for the Giant quarterback. First and 15 for Hosta. Morris behind Karstoff. Cuts it back. Lost it. They'll have to unpile. St. Paul. There you see Morris. Now he's got the ball in his inside arm. That's where all the pursuit is coming from. From the basics in high school, you just learn that you carry the ball in the outside hand. He tried to switch it over when he saw the pursuit, and it squirted away. Jim, he wasn't hit. He just lost it. That's right. Jim Wilkes, number 94, came up with a loose ball. The Saints back in business at the Giants, 24. Mays. Maybe a yard to the 23. I don't believe that the Saints are going to be able to run against the Giants, Mike. I think that the way they're going to have to try and move the football is the way they did early in the game. Quick set, throw the ball, play action pass, get it out to the backs. I could see Bobby Bear throwing 30-35 tonight, and the runs will be to keep the Giant defense honest. Well, as you saw there, Reuben Mays with 115 yards last week, his first 100-yard-plus rushing game in 20 games. Buford Jordan back into the backfield, and... The up man in the eye in front of May. Mays again. Good hole this time and down to the Giants' 18 yard line. This is where the Saints have made their living on third down and short. Most of the time they'll run on second down and eight because they want to come up with third and three, mm -hmm. third and four, third and two. That way they feel like they have total control. They substitute a lot of people. Now the defense has to decide, do we play the run or do we play pass? Third and three. Dalton Hilliard has checked in to the Saints backfield. He's number 21. And a bear to the shotgun. Quickly to Ronzel Hill. Hill to the 12 and should have enough for the first down for New Orleans. Terry Kennard was there to make the stop along with Tom Flynn. We saw earlier in the drive before Hill run down about 12 yards and catch it. Now he just, this isn't a slant. This is run, know where the sticks are, know where the first down is. If it's four yards, get five. If it's five yards, get six. And that's exactly what he did that time. A Bears three for four for 33 yards. See, it's not big numbers but they're effective. If you look at the average yardage on reception for all his receivers, they're in the area from 11 to 13. A lot of receivers have averages 17 to 20 plus, so it is a very short control passing game. Mays. Good block by Jordan, but the rest of the Giants are there. Penny Hill was there along with Johnny Cooks, the outside linebacker. 
one of the things that can take you out of a game, injuries take you out of a game, also working on your headlights. And that's what Bart Oates is doing. He just had a little headlight problem. He had to get his contact fixed. Obviously, if you can't see who to block, it's hard. It looks a little incongruous with all these guys, all the bandages they have on them, and somebody's worried about a contact lens. You see these guys with their hands all wrapped up trying to put a little tiny yeah. contact on their finger and sticking it in their eye? Brad Edelman is back in the ballgame. and left guard for New Orleans. It's second and 13. Hilliard. Dalton Hilliard to the 10. Kennard was there again along with Pepper Johnson and Eric Dorsey. Big play. Uh, Jim Morris said when we talked to him that he felt like this would probably be a low-scoring football game because the Giants just don't give up a lot. So he felt like it could be a low-scoring game. In this case, if the Giants can hold the Saints to a field goal after the turnover, they will have won this series, theoretically. And it, it gives them a big plus to keep them out of the end zone. There you see the numbers inside the 20s. They've been tough. 23 field goals, 14, 23 touchdowns, 14 field goals inside the red area. But the field goal is a given when you have Morton Anderson inside the quarter. A bear floats one hill. Touchdown. Not supposed to happen against the zone defense. A Bear just sets. He knows where he's going right now. Mo Hill just runs right up the right up the seam for the big one. I mean, he just he knew exactly where he wanted to go with the football and he put it there. Rookie Sheldon White, the man who was beaten, Brian Hansen will hold for Morton Anderson. They may be taking a look at this to see if Lonzel Hill had both feet in bounds. Well, you see what, watch the end of this. You see he goes by White on the inside, and Adrian went on the outside. Now, there's the catch. There's one foot. There's the other foot. Whoa. I'll tell you something. And you know what happens? You see, if you can't play defense, you can't cover him. You turn around and yell at the official. There's one. Yeah, he got both there. Well, did he have possession? That's what the official's going to look at right now. See, if the guy gets by, you go to the official right now. Here's a better shot of it. There's one foot's up in the air. The other, now, does he have possession of the ball? That is going to be the question. To me, it does not look like he has possession, Mike. That is close, isn't it? That is not a touchdown. I'll go out on a limb right now and say that is not a touchdown. He was bobbling the ball going through the end zone. I don't know what they'll decide up here, but you got it. You got to have possession. That is There's a reversal, reversal on the play. The man had one foot inbound one out of bounds so now it's going to be third down your limb is secure yep, still on the tree <laughs> of course Jim Moore doesn't care for that call there you now you see does not he does not have possession of the ball that is what the officials looked at he doesn't have that it. ball now he has it now he steps out of bounds he has one foot in and one foot out that's a good call now, this is fourth down. This is not third down repeated. The officials were wrong on that one, I believe. Because, remember, that was a, a third down situation. It would be an incomplete pass. That's exactly right. So it should go to fourth down. Now, what they're going to do is check and see what the down was. See the officials huddling around Fred Silva. They were indicating third down. And now, I believe, they're going to change to fourth. Fourth down. down this thing all under control yes you do i think i got an idea what's going on you want a striped shirt no thank you uh -uh. not after i i listen i watched that cincinnati buffalo game today i would that ooh. <laughs> that was that was not a uh, that game got out of control uh, by the men in the striped shirts i gotta be honest with you morton anderson has not had very many opportunities lately the ones he gets he does not miss inside of 40 this year 15 out of 16. this one will be 27 yards it's on a string. Martin Anderson thrills a 27-yarder. The Saints are up by three. Tonight's game from New Orleans is brought to you by Mazda and the exciting new Mazda cars and trucks for 1989. By Transamerica for insurance and financial services. The power of the pyramid is working for you. 
by Tempstar, the newest name in home heating and air conditioning. You can rely on the star. First quarter, 7 minutes, 58 seconds to go, and Morton Anderson, after kicking a 27-yard field goal, taking it up for the kickoff. We talked earlier in that drive, Mike, that it, that, had, that had to count as a win for the Giants in that situation because they did keep him out of the end zone. Now it's up to their offense to, to get something going. Wayne Haddix and Neil Gugamos back to return. They might have a chance to get this one out of the end zone, but Gugamos will down it two yards deep. Anderson is such a tremendous weapon. An exchange of turnovers set up that field goal. And the drive only went 14 yards before Anderson finished it off from 27 yards out. He's saying hi to somebody in this picture. You see that? In Scandinavia. I think the Giants have to start throwing the football in first and ten. I don't think they can keep on trying to pound it out. Carthon in motion. Johnson on the blitz. Green to Morris, terribly thrown by Hostetler. Just floated it up in the air. Morris lost his balance, but Johnson was applying the pressure on the blitz for the Saints. Well, you got to remember, Joe Morris, you know, he's five foot nine, so he's not exactly going to go up like, uh, you know, and, and slam dunk the ball to pull it out of the air. You can't float screens. I floated one in the Super Bowl, and it wound up for seven points for another team. Trust me, I'm an expert on floating <laughs> screens. Morris has had a tough time this year. Even though he's gained over 700 yards, he's averaging only 3.3 yards a carry. So if he gets a lot of yards, it's off a lot of carries. And William Roberts is now limping off for the New York Giants. Roberts, 6'5", 280, a four-year man out of Ohio State. They love his talent. They do not like the fact that he makes the big play and then makes the big mistake. But they would like to have him in there. And Carl Nelson, number 63, the dramatic story in his own right, will come in off the bench to fill in for William Roberts. Nelson, before he had a Hodgkin's disease, was the starting right back. James Gettys checks in on the defensive line, second and ten. Morris. This game plan, Joe, just about as conservative as you could possibly get. Screen on first, run on second. Well, they're trying, they're trying to get the screen so that they can just give Hostetler an opportunity to get something plus. There's Phil Sims. He's going to do the signaling going in on the sidelines to uh, to give the um, quarterback an opportunity. And he's all, it's also settling to look over and, and see that guy because you know that, all right, he knows what he's doing. Now if I can only execute this is the second time he's missed playing here. I asked him earlier. He didn't play in last year's game against the Saints. He said, yeah, you know, I, I just don't like playing indoors. Three wide receivers on third and ten. Hostetler drops it to Baker. And Baker gets it out to the 38-yard line. Remember, Hostetler has only played in two games in his five-year NFL career. Last week, he came off the bench with the Giants up by seven through a pair of touchdown pass or a touchdown interception. Or let me just make it interceptions. And they lost. Here's one of the big keys is you see Swilling come up the field against Riesenberg, but also George Adams is there to help out. They're just not going to let Swilling, who is sort of the counterpart to a Lawrence Taylor, dominate in pass rushes. They're going to block him with two people. First and 10, New York. They move the ball out to their own 38. Morris on the delay. Didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Pat Swilling is in there along with Sam Mills. Swilling, 56, is coming off an abdominal pull that has bothered him for a long, long time. He has not had the kind of year that he had a season ago, but when he is healthy, boy, does he play. I talked to him uh, on Saturday out at their practice. He said he's about 90%, and it's a, it's, it's a high abdominal pull. And the, the doctors have said it's going to take the offseason for it to be 100%. Uh, but he said, hey, look, I wouldn't miss this game. This is a championship game. I'm not going to sit out of this one. Second and 10, New York. away from Baker right there with him, Van Jakes. Five-year veteran from Kent State. 
we can see that the Giants are trying to throw quick and underneath. I, I really believe that sometimes it's almost better to just go back and let the quarter, instead of trying to protect them, just let them go back and wing it a little bit and put the ball downfield, maybe a hook pattern. You know, and, and just let him try and throw and air out the arm and gain a little bit of confidence. Right now, Hosteller has had one completion, but it's not enough to still get those bugs out. The report on William Roberts is a bruised thigh. He will come back. Turn long. Saints jump. Flags are down. Hostetler with a free play and dropped by Adams. Would have been enough for a first down. Now we'll check the flag. It looked like the left side of the Saint defense jumped. Here you see the, the uh, officials together, one saying, I first saw movement on the offense. And of course, if the offense moved first and defense moved second, it's the guy who, uh, the guy who gets caught first. <laughs> well, you wouldn't think who moved first would take this long. Yeah, but you see, everybody saw it differently. Because if there was one flag down there, it'd be fine. But now there's- 53 offense, illegal motion, 73 defense. Offside, offset, replay, third down. I don't know. That's, that's a bailout. You know, that, well, it takes a committee to come up with nothing. And that's what we got. It took a committee to decide it came up with nothing. I mean, if the guy jumps offside, or if the, if the offensive man pulls the defensive guy offside, it's got to be it's got to be an offensive penalty. Who moved first? One exactly. of these guys did, had to move first. That is a cop out. I agree with you. The Giants get another chance, however, on third and ten. Comes the blitz. Pat Swilling, the first one there. It looked like a group picture of the defense. Well, what you do is you call it a jailbreak. This is this is not a happy experience. Nobody blocks anybody up front. I mean, you got pressure up the middle. You got Swilling running on the outside. You got Vaughn Johnson coming from the other side. I think he went to the safest place, and that was down. Maury Buford to punt to Mel Gray. Another low kick. Gray with a chance to return from the 28. Hit hard as he got to the 35, and there is a flag down. After a seven-yard return, a 49-yard boomer, Lee Roussan, down on special teams for the Giants. And we'll sort this one out for you. This shouldn't be as long a committee meeting. Gee, I hope not. On the run back, number 52, illegal block in the back, above the waist, 10 yards, it'll be first down. It's Brian Ford, a reserve linebacker who commits the penalty. Saints ball when we come back. New Orleans up 3-0. That's Brian Ford, the Saints reserve linebacker, called for the illegal block on the last play, and this is the kind of thing that uh, keeps you as a reserve. Well, you see Lee Roussan coming down number 22, and there's Ford just pushing him in the back. See, he actually gets an assist on the tackle. You know, you just... The thing is, is when a defensive man or the kicking guy gets by you, you just really have to put your hands up and at least make believe you didn't hit him because these <laughs> officials, that, that's all they're looking for on these plays. 5.36 to go first quarter, 3 nothing Saints lead. They Mays, Taylor on the blitz, flag is down. Buford Jordan gets the ball on the screen, they'll whistle the play dead. Had more movement. Ball start, offense, left guard, five yards, still first down. It would be Brad Edelman who picks up the penalty. Just Buford's Jordan's luck. He only gets his hands on the ball about ten times a year. That was one of them, and they wipe it out. 
this Coach season, Morris, five rushes, four receptions. Yeah, but Coach Morris says he blocks real well. Yeah, he blocks great. <laughs> Of course, Craig Hayward is out with a strained knee. He's now missed four games in a row. And it's first and 15 or. Jordan got the carry. And maybe a yard and a half. There's a meeting of the mind. Now, now, what Phil Sims is telling Jeff there is he's explaining to him, look, there's absolutely nothing you could do about that last third down situation. Just forget about it. You're doing a good job. We're only down three to zip. Just keep on doing what you're doing. It'll break for you. Probably congratulating him on being able to walk off the field. Yeah, I'll tell you something, too. Phil Sims just doesn't get the kind of credit I think he should as a quarterback. He has matured into one of the best in the league. Some pressure. Yeah, what that is, is, is that's a that's a picture, uh, one of those little Polaroids of the defense that the Giants are playing. Now that'll go over to the to the Saints bench. The coaches will look at it. And based upon that formation and that play, they'll see what the drops of the giant defense are and maybe have another play that complements that. I thought we were in the age of high tech. They run it down on a string? Sure. It is high tech. It's a very high tech string. Put it down to the Saints. Call it eight. A bear under pressure got away from Marshall. White brings him down as he reached the 43, first down. Gain of 15 for Bobby Bear on the scramble. Right part of your screen, big plus for Bobby Bear, big minus for Leonard Marshall. He does the perfect job. He gets Darren Gilbert to tie and take the outside. He takes a hard inside on him, but just can't lock him up for the uh, sack. Bobby Hebert with 19 yards rushing is the leading rusher in this ballgame. Which is not good news for the Giants. Dalton Hilliard is the single setback. Kobe Brunner, the tight end, comes to the near side. Hebert quickly to Hill. Not much there, got a couple. Up from the corner, Mark Collins, who's just coming back off the injured list, made the tackle. Not knowing the Saints' offense, but understanding the pattern of what they try and do offensively. What they're here, they're winding up now. It's going to be second down and eight. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and run the ball, because all they really want to get to is third and four, third and three, so that they can continue that league-leading pace of third down conversions. Jim Mora has been criticized here in New Orleans by the local press for his conservative philosophy on offense. How quickly they forget. They haven't won in 20 years. He's got a 9-3, and they're complaining because he's not wild enough. Thank you, Mr. Bear floats it near sideline. Brenner can't make the catch. Hill was right with him. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Bear's pass to Cody Brenner. Complete flag of flag. And it will go against the Saints. That's usually that shot to the head or shot to the face by an offensive line and that. Those are the two things that offensive linemen get stuck with, a shot to the head or hold. Offense, number 63. Illegal use of the hands to the face, 10 yards, still second down. They used to say you could call holding on every play. You could call that on four guys every play. That's exactly right. There's Leonard Marshall. See what happens? Watch. See how his hands down low? Now all of a sudden it slides up off his shoulder, right part of your screen. You saw it slide up off his shoulder onto his face net. All it has to do is make contact with the headgear. It doesn't have to slap it. Would have been third and eight. The Giants take the penalty to make it second and 18. Maybe will go to the shotgun with Hilliard beside it. Come with four. Martin over the middle. Still on his feet, fighting hard. 
And finally brought down at the 46-yard line by Sheldon White. The Giants are predominantly a zone defense team. And Bear, I think, would love to. As a matter of fact, I know he does. He likes to throw against the zone, but he's got to get the ball off quick like he did. There you see it. Now, all they do is run the crossing pattern to Martin. Now, Martin is an extremely physical receiver. Talk to Bill Belichick, the defensive coordinator for the Giants, and he said the guy is, like, impossible to bring down. Now, here's the indication. Five Giants hit him, and he's still on his feet. Lonzel Hill is the injured New Orleans Saints player being tended to near the sideline. Hill had 49 catches coming into this ballgame. Martin had 68, number two in the NFL. Only Keith Jackson, the rookie from the Eagles, had more. He caught five today. It's interesting what the Giants did on defense that time. They brought in two down linemen. Brought in, they had their four linebackers and brought in the additional defensive backs. They have such great belief in their outside linebackers that they feel like they're as good a pass rushers as any lineman they can bring in and uh, try and put pressure on the quarterback. With them. Robert Clark, number 89, will come in the ballgame as one of the wide receivers as Hill walks off the field. Now they'll go to four wides, and Mark Patterson, 88, checks in. This is an unusual situation for the Saints. A third down and long. They just don't get themselves in a third and eight. Three-man rush and pressure. Hebert tried to get it to Perriman, but Perriman was sandwiched out there. White hit him along with Gary Reasons and shook it loose. And Harriman slow getting up. The rookie out of Miami. You get a chance to see what Bobby Bear sees now. You, you see all those giants sliding around. Dorsey does a good job of holding his ground. Pepper Johnson tries to make the move. Perriman finds the space. There's a, I, I've talked to Art Monk, the wide receiver from the Washington Redskins, about exactly what happened here to Perriman. He says, and, and he was so great at catching the ball in traffic, mm -hmm. I, he said, look, I'm going to get killed anyway, so I may as well make the catch. There's no sense in getting punished and coming away empty. So, uh, and that was the case for Perriman right there. He had his hands on the ball and came away empty and still got the wind knocked out of him. Phil McConkey back to receive the former Navy great. Everything a little over eight yards. Brian Hansen to punt. McConkey with 200 punt returns, second on the giant all-time list to one of the Hall of Famers, Emily Tunnell. Hansen real slow in getting it off, but crushed it. Fair catch, McConkey, nine-yard line. 45-yard hanger from Brian Hansen. We'll be back to the Superdome in a moment. With a minute 57 to go, first quarter, New Orleans on top of the Giants, 3-0. New York taking over just inside its own 10. They have averaged starting at their own 19-yard line tonight, so they have not won the battle of field position. George Adams, 33, and Maurice Carthon, 44, are the running back. Adams. And he doesn't fare much better than Joe Morris when he was in there. Fourth-year player, former number one draft choice out of Kentucky. And four years in the league being a former number one, he is still third on the depth chart at tailback. That's not what they're looking for. No, it, it really, they just haven't got the production. They got in production at a one-back, and that was, that's Joe Morrison. Really, that was in 86, his banner year. And, uh, I talked to Joe a little bit in the locker room before they came out, and he said, you know, I, we're so young up front, it's so hard to hit the holes I used to hit, and they're not there anymore. Yeah. Delay to Adam. Talk about no holes. James Gathers, number 97, was in the backfield, and he got there just as the ball was handed off. He said, no holes. This is no fair. Well, you get to see Gathers is right over the center. Now, he's over Bart Oates, but he just moves out on the outside. It looks to me like the line was trying to zone block. And what I mean by zone block is that the offensive linemen hold their positions and let the defensive linemen come to them instead of staying man-to-man -man and moving with them. 
That time, Gethers was going man-to-man, -man and Oates was blocking zone. Third and 15. That's three times as many yards as the Giants have produced so far in the quarter. Hostetler airs it out. Waymer can't make the catch. Manuel was the intended receiver, but he and Waymer got tied up a little bit, and Manuel went down. I believe they have to do that on first and 10, not third and 15. The Giants just can't continue to sit on this and, and play the game of field position or they're going to lose. There's where Waymer is so smart. He's been inserted back in the lineup, and I asked Dave why. He said, because I'm the guy that manages to get turnovers. And there you saw him use his smarts by getting in front of the wide receiver. Mel Gray, look out! A step away from breaking another one. Lee Roussan made the saving tackle. It's a return of 18 yards. Running in the first quarter, back in a moment. New Orleans leading the New York Giants 3-0. Hope you'll be with us next week. The Steelers, who won today against the Oilers, who are still in the chase for a divisional title. It's next Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern. It all starts at 7 o'clock Eastern with prime time. John Saunders along with Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Pete Axtell will bring you everything. And there's one picture of Brad Edelman. That's not him. <laughs> Unfortunately. Saints again with great field position. Giants defense really doing a good job. Terry Kennard came up in the free safety spot to chase it down. Let's go ahead. That time, Terry Kennard was five yards deep in the end zone. Now, Terry Kennard's their free safety. If you've got the free safety, or five yards deep in the backfield, excuse mm -hmm. me, if you have the free safety playing that close to the line of scrimmage, that means that those corners have to be one-on-one -on -one with somebody, and you've got to challenge them. It's the same thing that the Saints are doing to the Giant offense. Two seconds left. That play took only four seconds and long for Hebert. Trying to apply the pressure on Zell Hill. Makes the catch. Driven out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Pepper Johnson and Sheldon White knocked him out. That's the end of the quarter. We have a 3 0 game. I believe they might have had Air Jordans back then, huh? But you know what's funny is is in the dome now it's become a sneakers game because I know when my my first experience was up in Minnesota in the dome up there I wore just high top sneakers. I wish I'd have known Michael Jordan then I'd have used his, but <laughs> uh, I used sneakers. This has become a sneakers game indoors. Third and three for the Saints at the Giants 24. Hebert with very long pounce time. Has time almost intercepted. Sheldon White, who has two interceptions this year, had his hands on it, couldn't hold it. Intended for Lonzel Hill. Well, you know, this isn't becoming a mystery anymore for the Giant defense. They're just going to sit down on the short receivers. Now, Hebert makes a good read. It's one-on-one. -on -one, but Sheldon's right there. You've got to make that play. That is what the Giants have not gotten this year. They have not gotten the big plays to help them out of a hole. The defense, again, manages to rise to the occasion and force the Saints to try a field goal. Morton Anderson will try, officially, a 41-yard field goal. He's already been good from 27. Perfect again. So Anderson's strong leg has the Saints up with two field goals, 6-0. You know, with their defense, that's the way they like it. That's right. And it always amazes me about kickers. They wear wristbands. Why? I mean, he's never going to sweat. I mean, the guy's not going <laughs> to sweat. He's certainly not going to wipe any blood off himself anywhere. What are you wearing a wristband for, Mort? <laughs> you know, he's got that wristband on the right wrist. There he is. Oh, there he is. I don't know, maybe it's part of normal. Oh, I see. It's got a little symbol on it. So it's part well, of he's, a, he's a big guy, 6'2", 221. You know, he could be a player. That's the Goodyear blimp. Mr. Theisman not piloting it tonight, uh, and you're looking down at the Superdome. Came all the way from Spring, Texas, and it took 10 hours to get here. Yeah, and they couldn't even get it inside. <laughs> it would fit in here, but the, uh, the transplant is the problem. Well, you know, the it would be probably a problem for punts, too. 
It would. The guys would be knocking the ball into the blimp, kick it over. Be tough to get a game in. Plus, you probably couldn't see from up top either. <laughs> Everybody'd be yelling, "Move the blimp! Move the blimp!" Anderson will kick off, and the Giants are faced with a situation that if they don't open up their offense, they may be too far behind to bother. This is the series they have to do it. You start the set the second quarter, and uh, Hochstetler now should be settled down. There's no reason why they can't come out and try and move the ball and offense through the air. Anderson, Gugamo, seven yards deep. He'll keep it in the end zone again. And the kicking game just can't get you hurt with Morton Anderson. Well, no, and it, it is so sound because percentages are against an offense driving the ball 80 yards consistently sure every are. time they get their hands on the ball through a game and getting points out of it. And you've got the same defense who is a, a flow to the ball, make it happen kind of defense. Percent, this is a percentage football team, and it's it's all in their favor. Adams and Park on the back split behind Hostet. And they come out to throw on first down. Manuel makes the catch to the sideline. Gain of seven yards. There is a flag down, however. And it's a hold against the Giants. Offense, number 72, holding. Half the distance, still first down. Doug Reisenberg, the right tackle, two-year man out of California. Makes you wonder, on a short pattern like that, why the necessity for the hold. You don't need to. I just feel like, you know, Jeff got back in the pocket, one, two, three, four, five, fired the ball. All you have to do is physically get in front of somebody. He's never going to get to the quarterback. Hostetler only one out of five for 16 yards. Saints may have jumped, flag is down, they'll blow the play dead. If you're unfamiliar with Hostetler, he's a five-year player, still has connections with West Virginia where he played football. He is married to the coach's daughter, Vicki Nealon. Okay, I'll bet you this is offsetting again because it's a committee. You know, there's four guys there. And four guys usually means it's offsetting because two saw one thing, two saw the other, and there's nobody there to break the tie. Now, Bavaro jumped, but also so did one of the Saints. Defense, encroachment, nose guard, five yards, still first down. Well, how about that? They got the defense first this time. Tony Elliott called for the penalty. Right in the middle of your screen, Tony Elliott. Now, he's in what's considered the neutral zone, which is that the neutral zone is the, the length of the football. That's considered the neutral zone, and he obviously broke through the neutral zone. Well, this will make it first and 15 for the Giants. He's another one of those guys perfectly built, 6'2", 295, and he, he was born to be a nose pass right. Hostetler deep sideline. Baker may go all the way. Stephen Baker, touchdown. What did you say? Throw it on first down and throw it deep. That's right. I mean, you've got to challenge them. They're all up there stopping the run. You pound, you pound, you pound. It had to happen sooner or later. And uh, what you see there, Stephen Baker just actually, he does an excellent job of coming back to the ball. Hostiller doesn't get it out quite as far as he wants. He just sets that back foot and says, let me see how far I can throw this thing. Now, Stephen Baker does an excellent job adjusting to the ball over Van Jakes. Now, not only does he concentrate on the football, but he has presence of mind as Brett Maxey comes over to try and make the tackle to know where he's going. And all you have to do is look at the giant bench and know that he's on his way for six. The first touchdown pass of Jeff Hostetler's pro career. 85 yards to Stephen Baker. McFadden will try to make it seven to three. And does. So the New York Giants, without their starting quarterback, Phil Simms, have taken a four-point lead. Tonight's game from New Orleans is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Michelob. One taste will tell you why. The night belongs to Michelob. And by Levi's Dockers. If you're not wearing Dockers, you're just wearing pants. 7-6, our score. 14-29 to go first half. And the Giants who had been inept on offense, strike from 85 yards out and take a 7-6 lead. There's two ways you protect a quarterback. 
you run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and let him throw one deep. That's as much a protection for him because chances are your guy may come down with it. That's what happened. McFadden with a low line drive kick. Picked up, taken across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. And it was Gene Atkins, one of the up men on the kickoff team. Top part of your screen, you're going to see Baker go right down the field. Now, this is a simple zone defense. Very basic, very simple. He just puts a little move inside of Van Jakes. And I think Jakes loses the ball and really doesn't give Baker the credit that he deserves for his speed. Brett Maxey has to run from the middle of the football field to try and, and make a tackle to save a touchdown. He just can't get there. 80 yards on the drive. There were two penalties that pushed it back to the 15-yard line. And that 85 yards for the Giants, the rest of the first half, they gained five yards in total offense. Tight end goes to the far side. Adrian right, to lay to Buford. Buford Jordan with a couple. Fight for the 25. Again, I'll, I'll do this now. My heirs hostel, or he's on the phone. What they're telling him is, look, you're doing it against it. Again, it's very important that you, you give a young man reinforcement. And that's what he sees. He gets it from Phil Sims we saw earlier. Now he's getting it from the coaches upstairs. All they're doing is explaining to him what the coverage was. And if we do the next series, this is what you can expect. This is what we're going to look for. I wouldn't be just surprised to see uh, the Saints try and go up top deep uh, in the same way. Second and five, New Orleans, they to throw. Dumps it to George. To the 45-yard line. Dragged down by Kenny Hill. And view for Jordan, who doesn't handle the ball very much, getting a lot of work tonight. The reason why Hebert is able to throw this ball is because here comes Taylor from the outside. Now, Jim Dombrowski just stays with him. He doesn't go for the spin move. When you get him on the ground, fall on top of him. That way you know where he is. Go for the pin. Because believe me, this guy is relentless. Thirteen minutes to go, first half. Seven, six Giants. In a must game for them. Taylor comes on the blitz again. Bear floats it downfield, incomplete. This receiver, Lonzel Hill, was picked up very, very well by Sheldon White and cut off as he tried to make his move up the sideline. I wouldn't be surprised if you... Look, the second man into the Saints, that's Dalton, Dalton Hilliard. There's nobody on him. See him go down the hash mark right just below where the Saints' uh, helmet is? There's nobody on him. The Giants are trying to double cover Eric Martin because they respect him so much. That time, Hilliard was just out there all by himself. Don't be surprised if you see that same set by the Saints and Abair just stand up and just bang on the ball in, the, in that little voided area. A lot of times you'll see a receiver who's uncovered raise his hand trying to get the quarterback's attention. Hilliard did not do that on that play. Well, she could send the defensive coaches know where you are, too. Abair chased and brought down by Leonard Marshall gets his sixth sack of the season. Loss of nine on the play. Loss of ten on the second. Now, Dalton Hilliard before, remember he was open in the last one? Nobody at home on this one either. That's the second sack of the night for the Giants coming into this game. New Orleans was number one in the NFC and number two in the NFL. They had only allowed 15 sacks all year. Two already in the first half. A lot of credit for that secondary coverage of the New York Giants. Third and long, New Orleans. Four wide receivers. Abel and a crunching hit results in an incompletion. Big hit by Terry Kennard. Shook it loose from Martin. The Giants rush three. Now Martin's the inside guy. There you see him. Again, that void between the underneath coverage. This is an excellent throw. An excellent try at a catch and a great hit. Now, that's just, that's just good, solid football from everybody. McConkey deep to receive. A low spinning kick trying to come up and make the catch and does. Excellent play by McConkey. First, he made the catch and then got 11 yards on the return. Giants ball leading by one. 
12 minutes to go in the first half. We're in the Superdome in New Orleans where the Giants are taking the 7-6 lead. And so far, Joe, the Giants' defense has done the job. They really have. They've kept them in this football game, but it's very important that their offense doesn't go into a shell and just sit back and feel like seven points is enough. It's not going to be. They finally have the good field position. Take a chance now. Maybe run the play action. Get into the flow of your offense. You can loosen up a little bit more now. And if you have to punt, at least you make the Saints go a long way. Adams and Carthon are running back behind Hoska. There's the play action, and Hostetler dumps it to Carthon. In the Saints' territory at the 46, where a couple of those linebackers and Van Jakes get in on the tackle. Sam Mills, the first man there. Well, what you said, you're hot tonight. Well, it, it's funny. It's, it, it's not like you're studying or watching two football teams, Mike. The truth is, is when you really sit down and look at these teams, they really are mirror images, offensively and defensively, and the philosophy that is successful against them. Hostetler again. This time complete to Adams. To the Saints 37, very close to another first down. Antonio Gibson, the safety, had to make the tackle. What the Giants are going to continue to do is they're just going to just keep throwing it and throwing it until the linebackers decide to commit. Now, on this one, Sam Mills is on the rush up the middle. Now, this is why Carthon's in there. Look at that. He's a big back. He can take on the rushing linebackers, and he can give Hostetler the opportunity to get rid of the ball fairly quickly. Carthon, 225, can stand in there. Hostetler has hit his last three after only one of his first five. Carthon across the 35, maybe the 34. Tony Elliott, the nose man, was in the Yeah, that's what a quarterback wants. I mean, if I'm, if I'm playing QB, I want to have second down and one, second down and a half a yard all day long if I can. Which is, you know, we talked about the Saints offense. The Giants are doing exactly what the Saints try to do. Limit that third and long so that you get into those convertible short yardage third and second situations. The Giants have also got an excellent field goal kicking this year from Raul Allegra, who's now an injured reserve, and Paul McFadden. Comes the blitz. Has to go very strong, got out of it. Now the call of the sack back at the 42-yard line. Hostetler very powerful at 6'3", 212, but Ricky Jackson and Frank Warren came and got it. Well, Ricky Jackson pulled the old peekaboo rush. This is a peekaboo rush. What it is is, you see now, there comes Jackson inside. What he did is he went outside of the defensive end. Okay, he goes outside, and then he comes back up inside real quick to put pressure. It's the old peekaboo rush. He says, Frank Warren, you go outside, I'll hide, and then peekaboo, I'm gone. That's where he was. I bet he doesn't say peekaboo. Well, right? no, I mean, that's a good way to say it. It's like your peekaboo. Second and 16. He doesn't say that. Delay to Adams. Jackson wrapped him up around the knees. Ricky Jackson. What I try to do here again is, is you really... You run a route with your wide receivers to pick up the first down. So you run a 15-yard route with the wide receivers, but you also run a, a route in the 8-9 yard area mm -hmm. so that if a receiver does make the catch, he can run to pick it up. And that way also, Hofstetler has somebody to go to if he gets the kind of pressure that I'm sure he will in this particular down by the same defense. Third and 13. Blitz again, Hostetler got rid of it, but not in time. Intended for Baker, Pat Swilling was leading the charge. One of the most effective blitzing teams in the league. Left side of your screen, Swilling is down, number 56. Now he just flat runs around. I mean, you know, he just, he just, that, that's like, uh, that's like a quick left turn, and I'm in your, in your face. That's all that was. Maury Buford is on to punt. William Roberts having his hands full over there trying to block Pat Swilling. It's Mel Gray standing to contend. Line of scrimmage is the 37. Probably not going to be left a chance for a run back. This is one where they hang it up and try and down it in. Saints come, and Buford angles it to the near sideline. And put it out of bounds beautifully. At the five. 32 yards, but a great kick by Maury Buford. 
and the Saints will start deep in their own territory. Pitt Syracuse and Brigham Young in Miami. Our coverage begins Saturday at 4.30. Miami, of course, had a lot of trouble with previously undefeated Arkansas over the weekend. Buford Jordan, Dalton Hilliard, the running backs as the Saints start from their own five. Hilliard. Nice hole up the middle. First down to the 19-yard line. The safeties, Kennard and Hill, had to make the tackle. Hilliard with a 14-yard gain, one of his longer runs of the season. Good splits by that New Orleans line. It's just Harry Reason just gets, or excuse me, Reasons, Gary Reasons just gets totally wrapped up in the offensive guard. He voided the space where he should have been home, and uh, Dalton Hilliard found out there wasn't anybody there, just ran through it. Of course, that is the space usually taken up by Harry Carson, who's going to be on injured reserve for at least three more weeks. Drawing from Martin incomplete, short-armed it a little bit. And we'll have Roy Firestone at halftime talking to Harry Carson live. And we'll get more on his situation. Not happy to be placed on injured reserve. There's Carl Banks, who uh, has been replaced tonight by Johnny Cooks. Banks has got a, a bad right shoulder, but he says it's starting to get sore, which means that the nerves are starting to come back. And he's got a whole bunch of things that are hurting him, but the shoulder was bad enough tonight so that he wasn't able to, uh, to dress and play. Oh, yeah, Banks on the sidelines, Sims on the sidelines. Uh, Carson. This is, a, this is a coaching job for Bill Parcells, and so far he's done a great one. Second and 10, a bear play action. Dumps it off to Hilliard, and Hilliard is smothered by reasons. There is a penalty flag down, back by Bobby Abair. And it will go against New Orleans. And the Giants want the yards. Offense, number 77, holding. Half the distance to the goal line, still second down. Darren Gilbert, who is the third right tackle the team has had this year. Well, now, the other thing is, is Taylor is lined up on the side opposite where he normally rushes. Now, the right tackle on offense, there you see the old chokehold. That's a, that's a WWF move <laughs> where they come in. And Lawrence now gets his ankle rolled over on. And uh, you see him come up limping a little bit, but uh, I think he'll stay in. What I was referring to is right tackles normally don't block the big pass rushers. They usually get the defensive ends, defensive linemen. So by Taylor rushing from that right side, it gives Darren Gilbert a faster, bigger, actually a faster man who's just as big as a defensive lineman. So if he wants to rush from over there, uh, Gilbert's going to have his hands full. You know, he missed the first four games of the year. He is second in the league coming into this game in sacks with 11 and a half. Coming again on a three-man rush. And Abair to Perriman, and that's interference. Mark Collins, number 25, reached out a couple of steps early and grabbed him on the shoulder pad. <laughs> Defensive pass interference, number 25. First down. Bottom of your screen, you'll see the re this is our reverse angle now. As the ball is up in the air, Collins just reaches out and grabs him. Now, you know, that's not a bad move because if not, that's six points. So, you know, everybody, the coaches look at Collins like, oh, why did you do it? His first mistake was letting him get by him so easy. <laughs> it was right. a good defensive play to stop him from going for six. Now, you got to remember, Collins is only about 90% because he's playing with the sore groin as well. You can see when he went off the field all the wrap on the lower part of his uniform. Hilliard. Another big haul up the middle of Hilliard to the 43-yard line. Kenny Hill stopped him. But that's two runs right up the gut for Dalton Hilliard. They're just going right up the middle behind Court, Trapello, and Edelman. Coming right at right at the heart of that giant defense. They get Marshall pinned outside, Johnson pinned outside, Reasons is on the ground, and Kenny Hill's got to make the tackle. 
Dave Wilson on the Saints sideline, one of the backup quarterbacks. Hebert over the middle for Brenner, too high, and Hill intercepts. A Kennard, excuse me. Terry Kennard with the interception, and the Saints get the turnover. Well, remember, remember we talked earlier about the Saints are going to take that underneath, take that underneath, and they want to try and stretch the defense a little bit more. This is a situation where the Giants play a lot of double zone, which means you double the outside receivers. The vulnerable part of that offense is the middle. Now, this time, the ball just sails on Bear, and he winds up with the interception. Hobie Brenner did everything he could to try and get up and at least get a hand on it, but he was unable to. Bear has hit only one of his last six and has an interception, and the Giants take over at the 36. Hostetler to Morris. And little Joe Morris fights his way out to the 43-yard line, a gain of seven. Hostetler look a little bit more comfortable to you right now? He is. And the reason why he's more comfortable is, first of all, he doesn't have the goal post, you know, the shadows of him right on his back. He's not starting from inside his own 19. He's got a little breathing room. But secondly, it's the play-action pass. When those linebackers read that, they have to go back into coverage. So he's completing six, seven, eight-yard pass. Second and three. Morris took a shot as he got to the 45, fell forward to the 46. Mills and Jackson were there. When you don't see a defender and you see a ball carrier going sideways, it's Sam Mills at 5'9". There's Bobby Aver on the side. Well, what happens is if it's not Sam Mills, that time it was Anton Gibson filling the hole. And, you know, what happens is the linebackers are running laterally and these secondary guys are going north and south. And Morris is going north and south. And you know what happened once when North and South went together? It was a big war. And a miniseries. 5-18 to go in the half, third and one. Morris. He lost the yard. Great defense by the Saints. There they are, eight guys near the line of scrimmage. That's number 39, Brett Maxey. He's in there with everybody else. You got all the linebackers hitting people. Why not get your defensive people involved? Jim Wilkes makes the initial hit on Morris's legs. Buford to punt to Gray. Good kick this time. Gray lets it go over his head, and it kicks into the end zone. 56-yard punt for Maury Buford. Then with 4.37 to go in the first half, the Saints will have a chance to do something else. Next week, the Steelers and the Oilers. Steelers won today. And they just don't like each other. No. Chuck Noll and Jerry Glanville have had words. Last year, of course, they had it. This year, Houston went up into Pittsburgh and, and really put it to them. Of course, the Oilers uh, in that division race. Uh, the Cincinnati winning today. Uh, they have to go down and, and they know that they have to keep pace with them and keep on winning. Our story here, 4.37 to go in the game. New Orleans with two Morton Anderson field goals. And the Giants, an 85-yard touchdown bomb from Hostetler to Baker. <laughs> Dalton Williams. Perry Williams hit him first. And then John Washington, number 73, finished him off. The Saints are a control-style offense, and only having about 420 to go in the half doesn't really play into what they like to do. It's a grind them out kind of offense. At some point in this drive, if they continue to pick up five yards, five yards, six yards, three yards, four yards, they're going to have to start putting the ball up in the air, which is a little bit more unnatural for them and not the way they really like to approach things offensively. A Bear is fourth in the league in passing efficiency. Or fourth in the conference, excuse me, but that, that is a short, controlled passing game. Hilliard. Well, he's running great tonight. Nice cutback, almost broke it, got to the 29. He'll be just shy of a first down. Lawrence Taylor 
made the tackle or he may have gotten another 15 yards out of that run. Well what you're seeing is you're seeing some great safeties forcing the run. There's Perry Williams comes up. He takes the fullback out. He does his job. But also that New Orleans Saints offensive line is doing theirs. And they're just they're just taking the giant people, whether it be linebacker or down lineman, wherever they want to go, and letting Dalton Hilliard be the slashing runner that he is. Third and inches. Yeah, he stays in the Giants came on the blitz. The flag is down. They may have gotten there early. The Saints get the first down anyway. The Saints are going to be offside on this one. Number 83, Greg Scales, the tight end. They bring him in on short yardage. Moved before the snap. Taylor was trying to time it coming from the right Offense, side. Offense, illegal motion. Number 83, five yards, still third down. Right in front of you, right, you know, right there. There he is. Guilty as charged. Gales, a rookie out of Wake Forest, 253 pounds. Very uncharacteristic of the Saints. Six penalties for 44 yards. They, uh, one of the coaching points that Jim Moore has is you just don't make penalties. Don't beat yourself. Third and a little more than five for Abair on the shotgun. Over the middle line, Zell Hill. To the 39 yard line. Terry Kennard pinned him as he went down. 14 yard gain and a first down. Credit Bobby Abair with some, some nice fielding. I mean, if there's a golden glove available, he should get one for this one. Um, I never, I only had a chance to work out of a shotgun one time. And uh, Joe Gibbs, who was my coach, really didn't like it because he said you have to take your eyes off the defense to try and field the ball. But I think there are enough good athletes at the quarterback position where you just have an idea where the ball is going. How many times you see guys making one-handed catches or as a bears are pin it on the ground, pick it up and make the throw. And we've reached the two-minute warning in New Orleans. Giants continuing to cling to a one-point lead over the Saints, 7-6. The Travelers NFL Man of the Year Award to the player's on-field performance is complemented by significant community involvement. This year's nominees from the New York Giants defensive lineman George Martin and from the New Orleans Saints, place kicker Morton Anderson two minutes exactly to go in the first half of course that award will be made out at the Pro Bowl and we'll be there Honolulu where you and I will be uh, having an opportunity where was that Honolulu it's out in the west coast uh, west of the west coast four man run they there floats it near the sideline complete first half Martin made the catch at the 43, chased out of bounds by Perry Williams. Lower part of your screen, you see it. Uh, Martin just runs a little, what's a seven pattern or a, a, a corner pattern. He does a good job just knowing where the sideline is. Perry Williams just uh, lets him go. I mean, they've run enough ins, they've hit a lot of the crossing patterns. Now you compliment it and come back and throw a corner round. A bear, nine out of 17, 102 yards. And a first down at the Giants, 43. Comes the blitz, and they go to Hilliard on the delay. It was the right call against that defense, but he ran right into one of the defenders at the line of scrimmage, John Washington. Wow, but Perry Williams timed it so perfectly. He came late, so by coming late, he did not allow Hebert an opportunity to audible and throw the quick slam or the quick out to Martin, who was on the lower part of the screen. Block hey, running to the bottom right-hand portion of the screen. Timeouts remaining. Each team has to break. Hebert throws low, intended for Martin. He was covered by Perry Williams, the right corner. In case you join us late, let's update you on how we got to 7-6. Morton Anderson started out in the first quarter with a 27-yard field goal, but made it 3 to nothing. Then Anderson again, this time from 41 yards, and New Orleans moved out to a 6-0 lead. And then Jeff Hostetler threw his first career NFL touchdown pass to Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, from 85 yards. Starting to sound like Chris Berman. I'm not that quick. 
This will be here at halftime. Hebert, pocket collapsed around it. Nice throw on the run. Martin driven out of bounds, but he got to the 28-yard line. Mark Collins on the coverage. Good job by Hebert. Bobby Hebert is not known as a scrambler, but he does have mobility. So when you have a quarterback who basically sits in the pocket, you can send your defensive rush in one direction. The problem here is everybody collapses the pocket, as you mentioned, and rushes at one spot. But he still has the ability to move and find Eric Martin for the reception. Martin, three catches for 42 yards tonight. Two more, and he has the NFL lead back in receptions. He's working on club records for both catches and yardage. Dalton Hilliard just had a big first half. 20, 15. And the three-year man out of LSU running very, very hard. Perry Williams brought him down. Buford Jordan threw a great block for him. Now, we mentioned that the coaches said that Buford Jordan is, is an excellent blocker. Coming at you on the right side of the screen, number 23 cuts down Johnny Cooks. And what he does is he just allows Dalton Hilliard to turn the corner. One oh six left. Saints down by one. And have a first down to 15. Hilliard again to the 10, to the 9. Lawrence Taylor made the tackle. People will have to question how good a football team the New York Giants are because they have not beaten a team with a winning record this year and yet a win tonight over a team with a winning record and they tie for the division lead. Well, I have it, like you say, I have a chance to, to put some of those question marks behind him here. Bear had it knocked down. Stops the clock with 32 seconds to go. Bear really unhappy about something. You know, I, this, this one bothers me a little bit on this call. It's, it's second down and short. Now they drive back, try and throw. Now he's trying to go right off to the right side of the screen. Again, to, to one of the backs coming out of the backfield. Looked like uh, Buford Jordan. And what happens is now you're in a must-throw situation. If they ran the ball, and let's say they picked up two yards, they'd have third down and two, which again puts pressure on the giant defense. Now the pressure is on the same offense. 11th play of the drive. <laughs> Hebert throws for Hilliard incomplete. Covered well by Gary Reasons. He originally wanted to go to Eric Martin, but Martin wasn't open. And Morton Anderson comes on the field as Aver is a little slow getting up from the last shot he took. Now you see Lawrence Taylor make the move. No one man's going to block him. Pepper Johnson comes in and finishes it off. But Aver just can, cannot get himself turned to make the throw to Hilliard. Morton Anderson from 26 yards. Brian Hansen is the holder. High snap, Hansen got it down, and Morton Anderson put it through. Field goes under 40 yards, and like extra points for this guy. Nine, seven New Orleans on three Morton Anderson field goals. Coming up at halftime, Chris Berman, all the highlights from today's NFL action. Roy Firestone will be here and a live hookup with Harry Carson on his situation with the Giants and his announced retirement. And we'll be back with the analysis of the first half of this ball game. You mean Sugar Ray Carson? That's right. I think I think he called, I think he's been talking to Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, and asking him about how many times should I retire when people honestly believe me. That is that is not. I guess that's what happens if you don't have hair. You just sort of fill it in with anything. Yeah? <laughs> a pair on the sideline. They have a, a Houdat 
fan club down here with about 10,000 members, and they, they told us a great story about a guy who had his car stolen, and he called the Saints first and said he lost his membership card and said, I've got to go. I'm going to call the police and let them know my car was stolen. Uh, Elvis, I thought he was in Michigan still. No, that, that's probably, you know, that's probably why when Jerry Glanville left the ticket for him, he couldn't get it because he was down here as a Houdat fan. That's <laughs> Thank goodness that's a man. You know, it's interesting. Why would you have to have a sign that tells you that that's Elvis? I mean, you know, it's a pretty good likeness. Herman is a closet who oh, We'll have to ask Chris about that at halftime. Anderson to kick off to Haddix and Gugamos. And no kicks in the last four weeks have gotten the opposing team outside the 20 yard line. He just kills it. This one a little shorter. Gilgamos across the 20, but a flag is down. And the string may stay alive. And it will go against the New York Giants. George Adams talking to the official. He will On be the run back, party. Number 33, illegal block in the back. Half the distance, first down. There he is on the right-hand side. Well, you know, I'll tell you something. He makes initial contact on the shoulder. I don't necessarily, uh, you know, that's so hard to call nowadays. They, they say that the helmet has to be in front or in the upper part of the body, but now that they're allowing the guys to use their hands, there's no such thing as having their head in front. And the Giants will down the ball and let the clock run out. New York down by two, satisfied to go into the locker room at that point. And Bill Parcells, who has seen his defense play very, very well, will go to the locker room and try to get his team fired up. Our halftime score, 9-7. The Saints, now let's join Chris Berman. You mean that closet who that fan, Mike and Joe? Yes, we know. Well, thank you. And uh, we are at halftime, of course, as the Saints on field goals by Morton Anderson lead the Giants 9-7. Was it a lucky week 13 around the league? Taken at the three, however, by Gene Atkins. Atkins across the 20 out to the 23 yard line. The Saints will start from there. First half statistics the Giants with only 117 total yards at 85 came on one play, the touchdown play. That's right. What they 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 really have yeah, 85 yards on the one play. They had 23 other plays that have accounted for 32 yards for them. Um, to say that they've been inept is is an overstate, but uh, you got to give an awful lot of credit to their defense for just keeping them in the game. And, and the big statistic that jumps out there is time of possession. The Saints almost 18 minutes uh, plus, the Giants only 11 minutes. That means that your guys are out on the field an awful long time. And the Saints are the number one team in the NFL in time of possession. Across the 25 to about the 26, gain of three. This is what the Saints were able to do with the football in the first half of play here in New Orleans. They fumbled away their first opportunity after they had gotten deep in giant territory, and Anderson hit his first field goal. They had to punt after a six-play drive on their third possession, then another Morton Anderson field goal. Both of those drives started in giant territory. Another punt. And then an interception stopped the four-play drive, and then they finished it off with their only good long drive of the ball game, and Morton Anderson kicked his third field goal. Second and six. Hilliard on the toss. Excellent play by Pepper Johnson. The left inside linebacker got in there in a hurry. And again, we talked about the safety support and the corner support. That time, Perry Williams was coming on the outside, Pepper Johnson on the inside, and they wound up with a Dalton Hilliard sandwich. Bobby Abair, 10 out of 21, 118 yards on the night. He faces a passing down now on third and six. We have not seen Reuben Mays in a long time. Dalton Hilliard has done the job on the ground. And again, the Giants have forced the Saints into what they are not really comfortable with, and that's a third down and 10 plus. The 
comes the blitz. Barely got rid of it out to Hill. Hill leaning for the sticks. Gets to the 32. He's going to be a yard short. Sheldon White held him back from the first down. Terry Kennard coming on the safety blitz. Well, as I mentioned, you know, the, the Saints aren't real comfortable. They just don't have enough people. Bobby Abert just hanging tough in the pocket as Kennard just runs over him, literally. And uh, an excellent catch by Hill, but still comes up short. Brian Hansen on to punt again. And McConkey waits at his own 23. went down to zero that'll cost him five I bet you you're saying to yourself why did they do that why did they do that well because what they try to do is by shifting quick number 10 offense remember it's fourth down in a yard by shifting real quick maybe you get the Giants to jump offside and pick up the cheap first down and if you don't get them the first time maybe you shift again real quick and maybe they're stupid enough to do it the second time obviously they weren't so uh, you know you lose five yards and uh, but you still had the chance for the first That's a little low snap pressure bumped into flag down that will be a first down there's another flag down on the return Running into the kicker would be five yards. Tom Flynn came in and got a piece of Hanson. Now Fred Silva and his crew will try to sort this one out. Remember now, there's, if it's running into the kicker, it's only five yards, and it's not an automatic first down. So we go back to the shift play where he still wind up with fourth and, and one. So the delay. Now this is a big conference. You know why? Because Fred's got his pen out. Now he's taking notes. See? There, well, what he's doing is, is you see, it's like, okay, the back judge, you voted for what? And then, okay, we'll get the umpire, see what he voted for. Ham and cheese on rye. And, you know, it's... What they're really, what they're really talking about is number one, you got a penalty before or a penalty during the return and a penalty before so you know how are they going which which overrides which my thing is is that if the Saints refuse their penalty then the Giants wind up getting penalized additional yardage back from where the return was made and the other question is is it running into or roughing the kicker Fred Silva now talking to the Saints See, what he's doing is he's saying, okay, we either wind up with fourth and one for the Saints or a post-possession foul and penalize the Giants and take them back. That's the decision that is trying to be made right now. Both coaches waiting to hear. Running into the kicker. Be five yards and still fourth down. So we'll go back to fourth and one. There you see Flynn. Now he just comes right in. Actually, he has a very good shot. If he tries to, if he tries to just cut that angle and block it, my question is, is was he forced into the kicker by the route of the blocker? They had not had the delay of game on that fake shift earlier. That would have been a first down for him. Flynn coming hard again. Hanson gets this one. I know end McConkey. To 26. Across the 35 to about the 37 yard line, an 11 yard return for Phil McConkey after a punt of 42. Brett Maxey made the tackle. The Giants in the first half, not much. Three plays in a punt. They fumbled on their second possession. Six plays in a punt negative yardage and a punt and then the bomb one play 85 yards another punt another punt and then halftime Hostetler to throw under pressure loose ball Saints have it Well, 
Allen gets the hit. James gathers the recovery. Well, we saw the Giants try and block Swilling before on the outside with Reisenberg and Adams. Now they just try and let Reisenberg do it. And now Rutledge is in at quarterback. That was not Hostetler. So the Giants were trying to put a little juice back in their offense with a little bit more of a veteran player. Jeff Rutledge being around 10 years, and it backfires a little bit on him. What a way to get your first play under your belt. Saints ball at the New York 23. Hebert under pressure, and he fumbles. And the Giants got it back. Holy cow. Lawrence Taylor caused the fumble the second time he's gotten to Bobby Hebert. And that time you saw Bobby Hebert jump up and, and motion towards the, the uh, Saints bench and say, come on, they have to block it. Then he turns around and looks at the left side, and that's Jim Dombrowski, the left tackle, blocking Taylor. Taylor just takes the corner and knocks the ball away from Hebert again. As you point out, Mike, that's the second time tonight that that has happened. They've traded fumbles again. Jim Burt made the recovery. This was not a replay from the first half. And Bobby Hebert really upset. And this is Jeff Rutledge, the 10-year veteran. He'll try it again. He sacked again, and he lost it again. And the Saints have it again. Are you kidding me? Pat Swilling did it again. And Gathers recovered it again. This is not a replay. We have to tell people, you didn't just turn this on and see a replay. Again, from the right part of your screen, Swilling knocks it down. Rutledge was in the same spot in his motion and the ball comes through. Now, why they would come back and call a drop-back pass, Reisenberg did, Reisenberg did not block Swilling before. What makes you think in one play that he's going to be able to block him again with Rutledge back there holding on to the football? I don't know why the Giants don't come out and run the play-action passes that were successful for them to keep those linebackers honest to the Saints. Three plays, three turnovers. Keep it on the ground this time. Buford Jordan will be down to the 25-yard line and just inside. And the crowd boos as they run the play. Kenny Hill and Eric Dorsey made the tackle. The Giant defense has done an excellent job not only keeping the Saints out of the end zone, but keeping the crowd fairly quiet in this place. And now with these turnovers, it's like everybody says, oh, wait, hold it. Let's wake up. Let's get involved in this thing. That does not fare well for the Giants. We told you at the top of the show how critical linebackers are to both of these ball clubs. And they've shown it tonight. Second and five. View for Jordan again. Fighting for yardage. Got down to the 22-yard line. And Leonard Marshall stopped it. And Jordan a little slow. Going out. The official motioning to him to stay down and that he'll get help from the sideline. We have a timeout. 11 minutes to go, third quarter. The Saints still up on the strength of three. Morton Anderson field goal. From New Orleans is brought to you by the German engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealers. By Konica Copiers. They work as hard as you do. And by the Travelers, one of America's most experienced financial experts. You're better off under the umbrella. We're under the dome, the Superdome. And they're under the umbrella. Yes, they the are. Superdome. And it's 9-7, Saints football in Giants territory. 10.44 to go, third quarter. Third and three, Eber to the shotgun. The way to Hilliard. Got outside Pepper Johnson and looks like he has enough for the first down. Kennard made the tackle, but too late. There are your impact linebackers. Of course, the Giants have Lawrence Taylor. The Saints have Pat Swilling. This is what these guys have done tonight. Swilling's three tackles, two forced fumbles, two hurries, and three sacks. 
Taylor, seven tackles, three hurries, and two sacks. Those two men have come to play. Not bad. Talked to both of them before the game. Taylor said, I'm going to go out and freelance a little bit and play like I think I'm capable of playing. And Swilling said, this is going to be a physical football game. And both of them have been right. Because of injury, Swilling only had two sacks coming into this game. As you just saw, he has three in this one. A pair floats it over the middle intended for Hill. Incomplete. White was a step behind. Just missed him. The constant giant pressure has not, has I think, unsettled Bobby A. Bear a little bit. That time he wasn't as patient as he could have been in the pocket, and he unloaded a little bit quicker than I think he wanted to. There are the numbers on A. Bear, and the Saints have not gotten into the end zone yet against the giant defense. He's given up only three field goals. He'll use the long setback. He'll get the call. That was a successful play in the first half, right up the middle. That time, the nose man, Jim Burt, was right there to stop. It. Look at Burt's jersey. It's unbelievable. You can you can barely see the number on it. He's just got it wrapped so tight around. Well, it's painted on. That's actually paint. That's just, that's just his chest. He has he has lumpy little muscles. You know, they, they look like shoulder pads. That's his chest and that's his body. And they just paint the jersey on. It. They do that so that the offensive lineman can't grab and hold. Obviously, they grab, you know, I mean, look at how it's pulled out of his shirt. Uh, I think he's got to get it back into the seamstress and have her tighten it up a little <laughs> bit more. Third and nine, Saints. Harriman in motion. Hilliard. Dalton Hilliard to the 12 yard line. That will bring up a fourth and four. Mark Collins made the stop. And again, a very conservative pass play on third and nine. The Saints had the right call on there. You see Marshall make the move. You see Taylor come around and get the ball off real quick. Nice job by Pepper Johnson to contain Dalton Hilliard. Morton Anderson, who is 22 out of 28 on the year, three for three tonight. And they'll spot this just inside the 20-yard line, so officially a 29-yard field goal. Hanson a week ago ran out of this formation for a first down. Anderson missed one. And he's got to be shocked. Talking to Hanson, the holder. Anderson, Mr. Automatic, after making three, misses one from 29. 7.59 to go, third quarter. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann with you from the Superdome in New Orleans. The Saints on top by two, but it's Giants football after Anderson misses a 29-yard field goal. First time since the 10th game of 1985, he's missed a field goal of under 30 yards. Rutledge finally gets to throw a pass for Baker incomplete. He did the right thing. He just set up and threw that one. That way he figured Swilling couldn't get to him. The last two times he got back there, Swilling has visited him and knocked the ball away. So the Giants have to feel like they accomplished something on that play. At least he got it off. Hostetler, who played the first half, had the touchdown pass, but not much else. I don't believe he played bad either. I don't either. I, I really, the play selection a couple times I was curious about. And I really believe the Giants should go back to try and run the the little play actions of Duncan. We haven't even called Mark Navarro's name tonight, who's been a featured receiver for the Giants. Rutledge on a little roll this time. Throws too high for Baker at the sideline, covered by Dave Wehmer. We're inside the Superdome and outside the Goodyear Blimp, handled by Captain Aaron Jenkins of Spring, Texas. Took him 10 hours to get here by Blimp. Does about 47 knots. That, that much? As a speed, yeah, you can get up that way. You get out over the ocean and it blows at your face about 14 miles an hour. I, you know, I just tell you, it's a great ride. You gotta <laughs> try it. I'd like to. Third and ten. Rutledge has had no success since coming into the ball game. Here comes Swilling again, knocked up in his face and incomplete. Five pass plays for Jeff Rutledge. 
three incompletions, two sacks, and two fumbles. Problem is, they have all been dropped back, Mike. He's just going back, and now the Saints are just bringing people. It's a quick set and a drop. There are those big hands of Tony Elliott get up and knock the ball up in the air. But all of them have been drop backs, and the crowd is into this one. They're helping them out. Maury Buford, who got off three bad kicks, 31.7 net. His first three times has had two beauties the last time. 56 yards and a coffin corner job out of bounds at the five. He needs a good one here. And gets one off. Gray, fair catch, 40. 40 yard punt, no return. Saints football, they still have the lead by two. We'll be in the House of Pain next week. The Astrodome, where the Oilers have played brilliantly this year. They'll host the Steelers. Right now, we've got 7.35 to go. Third quarter, Saints ball at their own 40. They're up 9-7. Dalton Hilliard has been the workhorse. Gain almost five. Hill up from his safety spot to make the tackle. Just to give you an idea, you, you constantly see Hobie Brenner and the tight end shifting over. Hobie Brenner, in this case, John Tice, of course, has the injury. He's not playing right. tonight. But what you do is you see him start on one side of the formation and shift over a lot for the Saints. That's because Lawrence Taylor usually lines up to the open side. So they set the formation, say, okay, Taylor, you go over there. Then they bring the tight end over, which is another body for him to come around, and it helps out that tackle a little bit on the pass rush. Second and five. Bear floats it to Brenner. The tight end with the delay at the line of scrimmage gets it up to the 48-yard line. Brenner working on his third straight season of trying to get up to 50, uh, 50 catches. He's made only three this year because of injury. You'll see now Brenner comes in motion. Now here he is again. He stops. Now there's Lawrence Taylor, which was the open side. Now Brenner's going to block Taylor because he's their designated pass rusher. They figure, okay, fine, we'll block you, and then I'll release you. And Bobby just drops the ball off to Hobie. Nice little catch. Their seventh all-time receiver. Third and two. Wait to the sideline to Martin. He's drilled out of bounds by White, but it's a first down. Giants defense putting a lot of pressure on Aber. Well, you know, and, and the thing is, is it's such a tough, it's a, such a touch, tough offense to get to the quarterback, and, and you can see the reasons why. You know, the, the Giants are five for 13, very ineffective offensively, but Aber 14 for 25. Uh, 143 yards, which is right in his range. The three sacks is a little bit unusual for him. Of course, the Giants, they're just flat struggling because of the youth up front and the inexperienced quarterback. Hilliard. Got a couple. Dorsey pinned him. Along with Pepper Johnson getting up off the bottom of the pile. A lot of people have talked about the New York Giants not being the New York Giants of 86 when they were world champions. Um, Jim Moore thinks they're playing that caliber of football. Their defense tonight is absolutely playing championship caliber football. Caliber football. They've been on the field almost all night, and the Saints are winding up second down and eight, third down and seven. I mean, uh, those guys are really laying it all out on the field. And the Saints have only a two-point lead facing the second and eight here. Hilliard on the toss behind Luke of Jordan. Tough couple of yards down to the giant 41-yard line. Just the Saints taking a lot of time off the clock. This is what they want to do, maintain possession. A little bit longer yardage than they want. Now, here's Taylor against the run. Everybody said, well, let's run it, Lawrence Taylor, because we know he's a great pass rusher. Hobie Brenner does a good job of taking him off the ball. That's a, that's a three-yard gain, and that's how far Brenner moved Taylor back, three yards. Third and call it six from the Giant 41. Is that how the Golden Girls got their start? I don't know. <laughs> Hey, 
there had that one tipped and almost caught by the official Leonard Marshall got a hand on it and the Saints will have to put it again and Taylor a little slow getting up I'm sure there are games where players come well I, as a quarterback I never was in that situation a game where a player comes and just is is totally 150 percent out all night and there are other games, I guess, where you just maybe can't get yourself going. Tonight, Lawrence Taylor has got that throttle open at about 200%. Hands from the punt for McConkey. Floats it high. McConkey lets it go. And the Saints can't get to it. Nice try by Hanson, but it goes in the books as a 41-yard punt. 4.06 to go third quarter. Still a two-point game. Four minutes, six seconds to go, third quarter. Still a two-point ball game. And you mentioned earlier, whatever happened to Mark Bavaro, for that matter, Zeke Moat, the tight ends for the Giants. Normally, the Giants are a tight end-oriented throwing football team. Tonight, Bavaro hasn't even had a ball thrown in his direction. Again, I think it's got to be the backs. It's got to be the tight end that's going to help you move the football in this game. Rutledge at quarterback. Hasn't been able to move the team at all. Hands it off to Adams, and Adams will lose a yard. The Giants offense all of tonight boils down to one play a first half 85 yard bomb and that's it. Well their total offense has been 117 yards. Baker has 101 of them. Hostetler played the first half for the injured Phil Sims. Rutledge playing the second half. Rookie. That's what the Giants have done. Virtually nothing on the ground. Less than a yard per carry. Second and 11 here. Rutledge sideline complete to Manuel. His first completion. Waymer chased him out of bounds. Talked to Jeff Rutledge on the field before the game. I said, well, how are you feeling? He said, I feel great. I walked up to Bill Parcells and I said, you know, Rutledge says he feels pretty good. He said he should. He's been off for six months. He hasn't had anybody in his face. So, uh, you know, it's fresh arm, fresh legs versus coming back off that, of a knee problem. But uh, he is, again, just like Hostetler. He needs some completions to get in the flow, into a rhythm. It's very important for a quarterback to have some kind of rhythm. the blitz nobody home on the deep throw over the middle and it will be fourth and three Rutledge started four games last year including a game against the Saints where he threw a club record five interceptions so this is not his favorite team Maury Buford back to punt both kickers have been busy and Mel Gray who has had some good returns tonight, waiting at his own 30. Gray on the high. Lost the ball. And it looked like the Saints got it back. 45-yard punt on the bounce. James Haynes. Recently activated backup linebacker down to make the recovery. Well, he does a good thing fielding the ball, but you see Neil Gugamos just grabs his right arm and pulls it away from him. And again, the Saints get a home bounce. Haynes just running down the field to, to try and block somebody. He says, oh, look at this, a football. I think I'll fall on it. And the Saints are marching toward their first divisional title last year, of course, their first winning record. Of course, the Rams losing today to Denver. Uh, you and I'll be out in Seattle in a couple of weeks. That uh, that game, that's a division race going on. You bet. First and ten Saints. They have not scored a touchdown tonight. A Bear under pressure. Jim Burt has him, and that's another sack. Jim Marshall was the guy who started it, or Leonard Marshall, excuse me, and then Burt finished it off. We've mentioned Lawrence Taylor's name a lot as far as putting on pressure. But that defensive line, it's just three guys rushing. And there goes Leonard Marshall. He's got that little spin move. 
where what he does is he, he gets himself into the body of the offensive lineman and lets him make a decision where his pressure is, and then he rolls and reverses away from the pressure. And there you see Jim Burke, you know, picking up the quarterback after Marshall forces him around. Fourth sack for the Giants. Coming into the game, this was the best team in the NFL against allowing sacks. Given up only 15 all year. A bear short over the middle, intended for Perriman. The Saints wanted a flag. Adrian White came over the top on pass defense. Left side of your screen, just coming into the picture, and there's Perriman. Now, White, it's hard to say whether he made contact or not before the ball hit his hands. Now, on that particular angle, I'd say that he got his hands down in front, and uh, Bobby Hebert does the right thing as a quarterback. I mean, hey, he interfered with him. Come on. Hebert now 50% on the night, 14 out of 28 faces third and long here. for Johnson with a late blitz and they got him Ian Taylor at the five five sacks for the Giants excellent job by the secondary the Giants when you can rush three linemen and Lawrence Taylor it's like rushing five and a half people because really Leonard Marshall you'll see right in the middle of your screen Marshall's going to have, or I'm sorry, lineman down. Two people have to block him. That means there's two people on the nose, and then there's Lawrence Taylor with some one man trying to block him. It can't happen. One man cannot block Lawrence Taylor. Giants defense is playing an exceptional game with an almost total lack of offensive production tonight. McConkey at the 45, backs up to the 47. And dives forward for about three. 42 yard punt. Great field position for the New York Giants. They'll start first and 10 at the 43 yard line. Coming up next, the ESPN Sports Center, Bill Patrick, John Saunders, and then NFL Primetime, the most comprehensive review of today's NFL action. And then Hawaii, the championship game of the Maui Classic. Number four, Oklahoma against number three, Michigan. It's like watching an NBA game. Isn't it? Rutland. Carthon makes the catch, slips the tackle. Dives down to the 33, lost the ball, but it's down. Okay. Play action, fake into the lines. It's, it was successful for him in the second quarter, and then all of a sudden the Giants went away from it. This time, you run the little play action fake. It causes the linebackers to take one false step. Now, you're going to see the linebackers. See how they freeze? See how Mills has to freeze for just that second? And it allows Carthon to get out into the flat where Jackson puts a hat on him, but he can't bring him down. Carthon gets the first down. Joe Morris into the ball game for the first time in quite a while. There's a flag down as he gets to the 30. And the Saints are indicating that it is against the Giants. That's Lawrence Taylor. Looks like he's being... Uh, it, is, it, it is. He's being saddled three. together by bailing. Holy. Ten yards. Still first down. What it is, is that's a shoulder harness. And what that will not allow... That will not allow that right arm of his to get very far from his body. As long as it, if the injury is just a question of, or the, the problem he's having is in the shoulder, and if it's getting away from his body, then that's what they'll try and do, is lace him up and tighten him up. He wants to play in this football game. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable what this man's gonna get done. Rutledge late to Morris. He'll catch it at the 40-yard line. It was a first and 20 play. Yeah, if you get strapped up like this, you really have to want to go back down. I mean, this man here is, this is like a gladiator. I mean, if, if we had Julius Caesar sitting up there, he'd probably be applauding this man's effort. Now, here's how he gets hurt. Dombrowski locks his arm. Now, as Taylor comes around the corner, he just lands on that right arm. And that's what it does. He just jammed, I think, his right shoulder into the ground. He gets over the sideline. He says, hey, strap me up. I'm going back. 
Second and 18. Swilling on the right side. He'll be coming again. Rutledge to Carthon. Good hard running by Maurice Carthon. Very close to a first down, depending on where they spotted. He may have. Excuse me, be back to the original line of scrimmage. Excellent play selection. Excellent play selection. What they're doing now is they're they're allowing those backs to get out into the into the secondary and just dumping them off. That's the end of the third quarter. The Giants driving. The Saints still lead it by two. Has for its team. Since its beginning this past summer, thousands of Saints faithful have toured the facility. The hall captures the history of the Saints from their humble beginnings in the NFL through the struggling years. The most beloved Saint ever, quarterback Archie Manning, is featured as well as a symbol of today's success. Now, having never had a winning season for all those years, it takes a real optimist to open up a Hall of Fame after you've had your first winning season. Well, what's scary is how much stuff they have in there. Now, can you imagine how big that thing's going to be if they keep on winning like they have? You know, this, the Saints have had the ball 30 minutes and 12 seconds in this game, and the Giants have had it just 14 minutes and 48 seconds. Uh, again, you just can't say enough about the job that that Giant defense has done. they got to get their offense going. Third and nine. Moak lost the ball as he went down. No signal from the official. He signified it was a catch and that Stephen Baker makes the recovery. Gene Atkins knocked it loose from him. But it's shy of a first down. Ricky Jackson doing a good job putting pressure on. Now, Moet, they say he had the ball. He didn't have the football. He was bobbling the football all the way. Paul McFadden will come on. He is 11 of 13 this year. This will be a 46-yard attempt. Long enough. And it's good. McFadden was picked up when Raul Alegre was hurt. He's kicked 12 of 14 field goals, and he put the Giants ahead. And you saw the graphic come up 67% from 40 to 49 yards, which is a little bit better than Morton Anderson's percentage at that distance. So, uh, you know, here's a guy who wound up in Buddy Ryan's doghouse any number of times in Philadelphia. And he comes here, and he's really bailed the Giants out. There's Coach Parcells. He's doing a heck of a job of coaching this one. Yeah! <laughs> and it's 10-9 Giants. The difference, a missed Morton Anderson field goal in the third quarter. It's interesting, in, in the, the way this football game is gone, visiting with uh, Coach Moore on Friday, he, won, he said this is going to probably be a low-scoring football game, which it has been, because he said we have great defenses that can shut down the run, and if we don't turn the ball over and we manage to control it, you know, we can come out at the end. Their, their three losses this year, Mike, have been by a combined total of six points. Four of their wins have been by four points or less. So, I mean, this is the kind of game the Saints have been in all year. Saints win tonight. They would reestablish that two-game lead. The Giants need to win to stay even with Philadelphia in the NFC East. McFadden will kick it away. That's Mel Gray, the center deep man, waiting at the goal line. He's flanked by Hilliard and Gene Atkins. My short kick. Atkins. Up to about the 29-yard line. I have to see if Ben Hur is strapped up and ready for action. <laughs> ben Hur Taylor. The drive only 15 yards, but it was enough to get McFadden within field goal range, and he kicked the 46-yarder. Taylor back on the field. 
wearing what would have been described a uh, hundred years ago as your great grandmother's corset. Reuben Mays back in the ball game. Got maybe four out of the 33. You know what I do now? Looking at Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor has been a dominant force in this game. He and Leonard Marshall, I think, have played exceptionally well. You know Taylor's strapped up. Okay, so you really got a guy who's got unbelievable leg strength, but one arm. Run at him. Let's see, you know, because he doesn't have that ability to get with that strap, he's not going to be able to get his arm up very far to, to fend off blockers. Right. And and I'd run at him and say, okay, maybe if we can run at Lawrence Taylor, we can neutralize that great pursuit of his. Taylor sets up on the right side of the Giants defense, second and six. And the Giants got an early jump. Taylor missed by A there. They're not going to blow the play dead, and Abair crosses the 35 to the 36. Sometimes they stop the play, and sometimes they don't, and I haven't figured out what the difference is yet. Well, you, you just can't you just can't assume anything on the field. If the ball is snapped, then you have to go through Defense, with the play. Defense number 70, offside, five yards, still second down. Marshall went first. Taylor followed him. Parcells did not like it at all. He says, come on, think. So instead of second and six, it's second and one. You can tell by how hard he chews his gun by the intensity of the game. And this is pretty much. Uh-oh. Oh. Watch this. Now, the guy, who's ever got control it's of this battery thing, control. The now, what, what's happened is the official's going to try and walk up to it, probably, and then uh, <laughs> oh, the guy caught it. And the car gets a hand. And the guy that caught it gets a boo. Well, that's inventive. We've seen dogs, turkeys, squirrels, birds, but and now a car. Remote control battery operated cars. This may be a car. How did it get there? I don't know. Man, that was Alan. That was Alan. Well, 20. I do. It drove down. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was on a 25 yard line. Second and one. View for Jordan. First down. Pounds his way out to the 41 yard line. And who is that? Great tell. Uh, I guess Mick Holy Moses. Could it be? Who the hell said he got beat? I'm saying. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. What would possess a human being to? To dress up like that. another unanswerable question. You know, I wonder what he does during the day. I don't want to. Maybe it doesn't change. <laughs> First and ten Saints. Down by a point. They bear under pressure. Screen to Hill. Giants did a great job of stopping that screen play. Three blockers out in front. Coming up from the secondary, Sheldon White, the rookie, made a tackle that could have saved a big, big game. Well, we've, we've seen Perry Williams come up and force on the corner. We've seen Terry Kennard make big hits. Kenny Hill coming out of the secondary, the strong safety. Now Sheldon White, who, who assumes his role and does another great job. Now, there's a guy out of Miami, but it's Miami of Ohio. Seems like anybody that has the, where they went to school is a Miami. They're, they're really quality players. Bear now 15 out of 29, but only 145 yards, and he's been sacked five times. Kill you. Great tackle. 40, 36 yard line. Kenny Hill saved the touchdown, but Dalton Hilliard with a 20 yard spurt. Hurts overshifted to that side. Hobie Brenner, Jim Dombrowski does a, do an excellent job of clearing the way, and Dalton Hilliard just slashes up inside. A saving tackle by Kenny Hill to bring him down after a 20-yard game. Hilliard has picked up 92 yards against the Giants tonight. And a gaudy 5.8 average. 10-19 left in the game. 
Hillian again. This time to the 32. Dorsey brought him down. The three guys inside, Brad Edelman, Steve Port, and Steve Trapello, are doing an excellent job of creating a bubble and taking the nose tackle on, on that 3-4, which is either Howard or Burke, and letting him go to one side and allowing Hillier to cut back up underneath. Taylor will spend at least this play along with Jim Burton on the sideline. Second and six. Hilliard again. They'll try the left side. Cut back. Nothing out of it. Ricky Shaw, number 51, made the stop. And there is Anderson heating up the leg on the sideline. He's getting three of four tonight. Basically, what we've seen the Saints do is they move Hobie Brenner over, and then they run to that strong side. They just, they just let the line fire out, create a gap in that 34 defense, and try and let Hilliard just pick his way up for a four-yard gain, a three-yard gain, and then all of a sudden he breaks that 20-yard. Line of scrimmage is the 32. If they wanted to kick a field goal from here, it would be a 49-yard effort. Couldn't get. Tries to run for the first down. Knocked out of bounds. Big shot from Adrian White. For the backup safeties. And Abear realized he couldn't get to the sticks. Saved himself a little punishment. And Morton Anderson will come on to try to make it four or five. You know, I talked to Mark Mosley, who is a great kicker with the Redskins, about as we visited through the course of years as I held for him, the psychology of you miss a short one. Okay, now all of a sudden you come back and you're going to kick a, a 45-yarder. I think it helps in the concentration of the kicker. And he felt that way too. Anderson from 45. Dead on line. Morton Anderson has kicked four field goals. The Saints regain the lead by two. Tonight's game from New Orleans is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. By Bud Light, everything else is just a light. And by AT&T, the right choice. Eight minutes, 37 seconds left to go in the game. Morton Anderson with four out of five field goals getting ready to kick off. I have a statistic for you. Do you What's realize that? in the last three games, four games, including this one, that the home team has not scored a touchdown on Sunday night football? I imagine that's really thrilling to Houston. That's where, where we, we go next week. next week. But, uh, the offensive coordinator's been meeting us at the airport. Nine field goals in the last three-plus games. Morton Anderson. Holmes one. Gugamos a yard deep. He stepped out of the end zone. Now he's got to run it. And somehow, Kokomo's got it out to the 20-yard line. Holy cow, he was almost in a terrible jam. Well, you know, once he goes to his knee, and he, you know, he looks at the official, he goes to his knee, the official should blow him dead here. Right now, does his knee touch the ground? I mean, that means that, hey, look, I don't want to run the ball. Now, that man, that, that play is blown dead. Should be. That play should have been blown dead. I, the official is standing right there. I don't know what he's watching, but, uh, I mean, the man had no intention to return the ball initially. Stop the play right now. Make a decision. That's why they give him whistles. <laughs> Rutledge, nice play action fake, then goes to Carthon. Maurice Carthon to the 40-yard line. Mills made the tackle. 19-yard game, and that has been a very popular play here late in the ball game for Rutledge. There's a guy coming into the football game. In 12 previous games, he's had 13 catches. Tonight, he's had three or four, I'm sure. Been Zipping very active. Out there. And Rutledge has got the offense moving six for 10 for 52 yards. The NFL officials have informed us that the player taking his knee down to the end zone must keep it there until the whistle blows or it's not over. Adams will get to the 50 very close to another first down. So you're not down until the whistle blows, my friend. Yeah, but I mean, if the guy kneels down, 
the logic tells me maybe you should blow the whistle. The guy obviously <laughs> doesn't look like he wants to run it out, right? I'm with you. I mean, if you kneel down, I say, oh, Mike's down. Let me blow the whistle. I don't know. Maybe they're just letting him play. Say, oh, you want to get up? Go ahead, get up. <laughs> this will be second and less than a yard. Carthon and Adams the back. Carthon gets the call. Flag is down, and Carthon did not get the first down, and now there's another flag down. Well, you got it, a young motion by the uh, offensive line of the Giants, and again, this is, this is a penalty that you have to credit to the crowd here. Offense, number 76. They're a false start. Five yards, still second down. John Elliott, the rookie tackle out of Michigan. Phil Sims in his red sweater. Bill Parcells with his headsets on. Now, Parcells will talk to the coordinators upstairs. He, he can talk to either the offensive coordinator or the defensive coordinator or just listen in to a three-way conversation. So he knows what's going on every instance. Second and six. Here comes the crowd again. Blitz. Rutledge to Adams. First down, Giants. Clutch play by Rutledge, who had a big rush looking him right in the face. That's what's known as happy feet. You're going to see, now look at these feet moving. He's just got all those feet. He never really sets. He just hangs the ball up, does a good job of finding Adams. Waymer comes in, makes the hit, but it's a first down. Watch these little feet. Now, there, now he sets the back foot. Now look at those feet go. Look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Uh-uh, I'm going to let you hit me. Good thinking. Yeah, I, I left mine on the ground once too long. <laughs> yeah. Three-man rush. Rutledge with time. He throws in complete intended for Baker. Waymer had fallen down on the coverage and passed a bit on target. Oh, it's a big play. Again, I, you know, I, I got it. They come out, they run a play action, first down. Play action, Carthon, first down. Play action, Carthon. And they, you know, hit the back out of the back. Hit the back out of the back. Wheel. And all of a sudden, they come out and they throw the ball to the wide receivers, which they haven't completed except the one big one all yeah. night. And they wind up in a second and ten. And again, put a lot of pressure on the offense. The blitz again. Rutledge on low. Van Tix knocked it away from Manuel. And there is a flag down. <laughs> Holding against the Giants. Now, do you take this or decline it? Well, I, I personally think that uh, you did. I, I take them back. I'll be honest. Offense number 33. Holding. 10 yards. Still second down. I take them back. Adams. Well, I take them back based on the way that my defense is playing and how ineffective their offense is. You know they have to put the ball in the air if they want to try and get a first down, which right. means that you could pick it off. Or if the guy catches it, you could knock the ball loose. And it, it's second down and 20. And, and based on what the Giants have done offensively, you know, they've had trouble amassing 10 yards. What's not to say that they can't do 20? pursuit by Swilling. He was rushing the passer, saw the play, turned around and made the tackle on the screen. Well, we're seeing a pair of number 56s tonight that are yeah. just, you know, uh, there's there's an all-pro level, and then there's this level that these guys play on. They just never stop. You see the top right-hand part of your screen, number 56 is down in a rush. Now he's being blocked by John Elliott. He's on the ground, but he gets up to hit Adams from behind and make the tackle. Some play by the linebacker out of Georgia to third and 20. I'll come right back here again and try and throw it deep down the field again. Another blitz. Pick up. Boy, Cook.
Rutledge reads the cover right. They're double covering the outside receivers, but he just never gets any air under it. Troy Cook looks like he's running the pass pattern, and he can't quite make the catch. Stacy Robinson trying to make the tackle. We'll be back to the Superdome in a minute. With two fumbles and an interception here in the second half, and the New Orleans defense stopped that drive with a Troy Cook interception and sets the Saints up in business just outside their own 33-yard line. Dalton Hilliard, who has been the star on offense, tripped up that time by reasons who cut through the gap. There you see the, the quarterback comparison. Of course, Hebert's still playing five for eight, 27 yards. That's a three sacks. That's sort of a, a typical day for a half for Bobby Hebert. Jeff Rutledge, nine for 15, had the one interception, though. The two fumbles and the two sacks hurt him. They're getting more production or more activity, I should say, out of the quarterback position, but not, not near this, uh, any kind of production. Saints trying to do what they do best, move the football and work time off the clock. Dalton Hilliard again, and again, reasons right there. The crowd booing a little bit by the play selection. They thought maybe that was a little too conservative. Gary Reese, they, they've been running up inside. We talked about the job that Court and Edelman and Trapello have done on Burt and Reasons and Pepper Johnson. Now, Reasons just beats Edelman right to the hole and said, look, you've run here all day. It's about time I'm home for one, and he was. Biggest play of the football game right now for both the Saints and the Giants. If they can keep this drive going, they can get it down to two minutes, and if the Giants can stop them here, they can get the ball back in pretty good field position for their offense. Third and 10, three and a half minutes to go. Hebert working on that clock as much as he can. It's down to three right now. Over the middle, picked up by Reasons. Reasons down to the 20-yard line. The big mistake, which is what the Saints were trying to avoid. Reasons with two straight tackles and then the pick. The Giants only rushing three. They drop it. There he is. We saw Toy Cook run the route before. This time Reasons runs the route as Bear tries to get it in to Lonzel Hill. Now it becomes very, very interesting. The Giants already within field goal range. They're down by two with three minutes and 13 seconds left to go in the game. Now, can, can you tell what happened? This was the last play. I mean, that was that was when the guy caught it, ran with it, and got on the ground. Almost disbelief. Six times in his career, Reasons has picked one off. This may be the biggest of all. Mark. Gaping. Holy football. Recovered by Dave Weimer. tonight have these teams exchanged turnovers back to back it's unbelievable they run right at the heart of the defense that's the third time this half the Giants have fumbled on the first play Carthon does an excellent job on Mills but Gathers comes in and just gets his hand in I mean if you're going to give the ball to one guy who's handled it so much in the last couple of years you got to figure it's Joe Morris in a tough situation Jim Morris showed no emotion, no emotion when his team turned it over. Bill Parcells a little more. There's one guy that's got to breathe a big sigh of relief, and that's Bobby Abair. He gets a chance to go back on the field now. There's 3.07 left to go in the game. And uh, I guarantee you one of the things he's saying to the guys is, look, hold on to it, all right? Saints start from their three. Both teams have tried to give this one away tonight. Hilliard. to the four. There's a penalty flag down. They're going to call offsides against the Giants. That's a big penalty. 70. Defense. 
Offside, five yards, still first down. Leonard Marshall again. Now he's trying to guess a little bit and get a jump off the ball, but uh, you'll see at the right side of your screen, number 70, he's lined up so close to that neutral zone anyway, and just that little bit of movement brought him across the line. Hey, they now on first and five, 247 and counting. Both teams have all three timeouts left. for Jordan. Hard running up to the 13. Very near a first down. Kenny Hill had to come up and make the tackle. And it would be to the Giants' advantage for the Saints to have a first down here. Because if not, if, if they do have a first down, they can use one of their timeouts. That means that you get the two-minute warning plus you have two left. If it's third down and short, that means the Saints get to run another play, and they can run the clock all the way down to the two minutes and then pick up the first down. So by coming up short on this particular play, it really is in favor of the New Orleans Saints. And the Giants have used their first time out of the second half to stop the clock with 2.19 to go. A battle of turnovers. 2.19 left in the game. The Saints by two. Sports Center coming up immediately after our telecast, John Saunders and Bill Patrick. Right now, our story, 2.06 left to go at the Superdome. Saints second and inches. And when they originally called timeout, there was 2.19 to go on the clock. Now there's 2.06. going to have to reset it to 219. I definitely think they ought to have another conference. <laughs> On the time for 219. 219. Doesn't do you any good to call a timeout if they start start the clock afterward. You know, sometimes these guys at the home, they at the home they just sort of look away for a second or two and the clock just runs away from them. It just starts itself. Yeah. Of course, the Giants need all the ticks on that clock they can get. I'll tell you, and they're going to have to call another. If, if the Saints get a first down here, they're going to have to call another timeout real quick because that leaves them two. Then it'd be second down at the two-minute warning. Third down, they use the, or, uh, they use up the second down. Third down at their other timeout. So then they'll lose 30 seconds on the clock, and they can be down. To, they could get the ball 66, back. 66, playing an eligible position. 66. They could get the ball back with about a minute and 25, a minute and 30 seconds to go and to try and get in the field goal range. The announcement at 66 is Chuck Comiskey. He will line up as an eligible receiver. They bring him and his 290-pound frame in on short yardage situation. Here's for Jordan. Dives forward for the first down at the 15. There's another flag down. It's got to be a holding penalty. And it is. All right, now this changes. This is boy, it's, it, like every second. It's a new set of circumstances. You're Offense trying to think about. number 63, holding half the distance. Brad Edelman. And I've got to ask you, Joe, why in heaven's name would you hold on second and inches I, on a fullback dive play? You know the old adage, you say they can call holding on every play? Uh, this one baffles me as well. I mean, that's such a quick hitter. I don't even think you have time to get your hands up and around somebody to hold them. Exactly. Unless, of course, you get the, the defensive man slanting in such a way that you get your arm around and it's almost like a takedown. That's the only thing I could figure. Time out, number two, New York. So that play only took three seconds, 2.16 to go on the clock. New Orleans will face second and six. So with one timeout left, the Giants are banking that they can stop the Saints on these next two plays. That's right. Bill Parcells is putting all his eggs in this basket right here. If they can stop them, they're almost guaranteed at least 
decent field position. You don't want to say good because you never know where the, the penalties they usually get. And there's the there's what we're looking at. Philadelphia, of course, winning big today and beating Phoenix. They have to play again. And that one will be out in Phoenix. Uh, the Giants need this to stay in the race. The Redskins losing today pretty much takes them out. New Orleans in control, but in tiebreakers with San Francisco, they don't do very well. So they have to all. continue to win to win the division outright. The Giants do not do well in tiebreakers either. And if they lose tonight, they fall to seven and six along with Phoenix and the Rams. Both of these teams feel they have to win their division. And keep this in mind, a loss tonight, and the Giants still haven't beaten the team with a winning record in 1988. Bill Parcells has seen his team fall from the pinnacle of the Super Bowl, much like the Redskins have fallen this year. You win the Super Bowl, you get that brutal schedule. This year, he has had the benefit of a much easier schedule. Yeah, but I, I still think that his football team, when they won the Super Bowl, they were so dominant, and they had so many breaks, and close games go their way. They've been in close games, three of them in particular they could have won, and, and it hasn't gone for them that way. Second and six. Buford Jordan across the 10 to about the 11. He needs to reach just past the 32 for a first down. See if the Giants lo lo use their last timeout. They will not. They will let the two-minute warning stop the clock for them. The biggest play of the game, third and two, coming up when we come back. That's the Goodyear blimp over the Superdome here in New Orleans being handled by Captain Aaron Jenkins of Spring, Texas. There he is. ESPN cap and all. Beautiful sight in a great city of New Orleans. And the Saints, with two minutes to go, lead by two and facing a third and two from their own 11. I got to believe the Saints are going to run the football here. Uh, that, that's, it's the thing that is the least risky thing to do. Of course, the Giants only have one timeout left. Hilliard on the top. And they stop him at the 11. The Giants defense has played great all night. Terry Kennard came up and filled. Bill Parcells, I don't think, wants to use the timeout here. No, they'll let it run down. See, now they'll go to 45 seconds, so it means they'll get it back um, somewhere in the neighborhood of a minute to go with one timeout. Now, you got to figure, you're going to punch them in your end zone, um, and what will happen is... McConkie will probably field it somewhere in the neighborhood of the 50. So they're really looking at only having to move the ball 15 yards or so to get it to the 30-yard line for a shot at a field goal. I saw Phil McConkie in the elevator and asked him if he'd return one for a touchdown tonight. He said, sure, I will. This is the chance. You want to bet he doesn't fair catch this one? <laughs> Hanson with 10 men on the line. Saints let the clock run down. They will take the five-yard penalty the clock stops with 108 to go see I don't understand that I'll tell you why five yards here is not going to matter to the Saints uh, the clock doesn't matter to the Giants at this particular point but what happens is they got a chance of picking up five yards being closer to kicking a field goal I'd have kicked the thing exactly. out you know McConkie's going to run around trickle around a little bit back there so it'll get it under a minute uh, I just think I think it's a bad decision you know, yeah, you're trying to run the clock off, but um, you're, you're giving the Giants a, a closer opportunity to the goal. If the Giants come after Hanson, they show 10 men on the line. Holy cow! Hanson was leveled. Now it's fourth and seven. Running into the kicker is five yards. It would not be a first down. Roughing the kicker, and boy, they blasted Hanson. Would be a first down. Well, I don't know. Well, you know, what constitutes... See, that wasn't intentionally done. I mean, that doesn't necessarily constitute roughing. Well, it will be an interesting call. Rough running into is not an automatic first down. It would still be fourth. Roughing the kicker would be well, a first down. It's intention that they have to decide. Did somebody intentionally try and rough the guy? I think these guys were just going after the ball. This is something you and I have talked about all year. I don't sure. know why more people don't try and go after kickers. Running into the kicker. Five yards, single fourth down. 
So it's fourth and two. All that did was take eight seconds off the clock. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Here they come. The Gi This is something that I've talked about all year. The Giants try and take a shot at it. Now that, you know something? Maxey, Brett Maxey, blocked him in to Hanson. That should not have been a penalty. That should either be roughing the kicker or being blocked into the kicker. There's no way it should be that middle running into. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you, Mike. It was Sheldon White, the rookie, who got a piece of it. You, with that replay, it's it's got to be one of those two calls, not the one they made. Look at the top right of your screen. Now, that's Brett Maxey blocking. Now, he is in contact with the Giant, and he is pushing him into the kicker. That That is not a penalty. I gotta be honest, if, if they're gonna say that pushing the pushing a man into a kicker is not a penalty, it is not. They're looking at it in the instant replay booth. Oh boy, if they change it here, let me tell you something. You're looking at one very unpopular guy, the man in the white hat. But apparently we will go ahead and play with a minute and fourth and two. Oh, what a call. What a bizarre three minutes. Not a very good kick, but it takes a good bounce. The top, he saves it from going any farther and runs out of bounds a yard shy of midfield. But the Saints fans not happy about this at all. Well, they'd have been a lot less happy if the call went the way I think it should have gone according to the ever. rules. Yeah. The we are told. Go ahead, Mike. You tell. I don't. Have, I don't. I don't have the guts to tell the world this. We are one. told that the replay is inconclusive. Well, I don't know what they're looking at. We didn't think so. I don't know what they're. I mean, that's not one of those different angle jobbies. You know, let's let's see what my eyes tell you. Looked to me like there was contact just before he hit the kicker. Fifty-two seconds left. Out of bounds at the New Orleans 45. Van Jakes chased him out. Remember, the Giants have a timeout left. That is the second time that the Giants have thrown to their tight end. Both of them have been Zeke Moat. One was a catch and what was ruled a fumble. And now this one did a real smart thing, though. He's very conscious of, of getting out of bounds to save the clock. They need to pick up about 15 yards to get inside 50. It would be a 47-yard attack. McFadden has hit them there. Comes the blitz. Baker wide open and out of bounds. What a job by Rutledge to get the ball to Stephen Baker. The Saints do the right thing. They put a lot of pressure on Rutledge. Rutledge has great presence of mind just before Tony Elliott gets to him and finds Stephen Baker down the sidelines. Boy, oh boy, you don't think he's sweating under that blue, blue shirt? Rutledge is 11 for 17, 113 yards, and Stephen Baker tonight is the giant offense. Three catches, 144 yards. 39 seconds left. The now, Giants well within range. Do you run it? There's another flag down. See, all Rutledge is trying to do is get it in the middle. Now, with the hash marks as close as they are, it's not like college football, but all he's trying to do is get it in the middle. Procedure against the Giants. Offense number 60. This is where having a veteran quarterback is so important because now, is, now it becomes the quarterback's game. You, you look around, you see if your men are set. Even with the crowd going, you get them in the huddle and you say, look, settle down, guys. Just take it easy. I'm in charge of this thing. I'm going to sort of sneak over here and try and set it up for Paul and give him a clear shot. What the Saints are going to do is they're going to just try and grab at the ball. Rutledge goes down. They're just trying to take the time off the clock. Will the Saints use a timeout? Yes, they will. They've got to try to conserve some time because this is well within McFadden's range, and they need some time if they make the field goal when they get it back. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. 
I've never had a cold where I enjoyed a game more. Yeah, you do. You sound, you know, but this kind of excitement just gets rid of it, though. It makes your head clear here in the fourth quarter. It's, I'll tell you, guy, there's Bobby Bear really got taken off the hook. I mean, he uh, throws the interception, and Joe Morris winds up giving him back the ball. So, I mean, you can't blame Hebert for what happened here. I, I think you have to give a lot of credit to the Giant defense. Uh, Bill Belichick, their defensive coordinator, um, said that they wanted to force the Saints into third down and long 10-plus situations. Mm -hmm. They have done that tonight. I think the Giant defense has executed their game plan right to the tee. Second and 16. And Rutledge will just fall on it again. The Saints have to use another timeout. On the Saints side, of course, when we visited with Coach Moore, he said he expected it to be a low-scoring game. Uh, this is very typical of what the Saints have been in all year, very close contest. And I really believe that they have played it pretty much the way they want to, except uh, with the score in their favor at this point, it's exactly the way they want it. Keep in mind what happened last week to the Giants. They blocked a field goal in the closing seconds. The Eagles recovered it and ran it in for a touchdown, so they're used to weird endings. The one question now, with a third and 16 situation, is would you happen to go for the field goal now on third and 16 in case you get a bad snap and would have a fourth down chance? Now? You're absolutely right, and that's what they're talking about right now. There's Paul McFadden. All he's seeing, he's looking up at the goalpost, taking a deep breath, what they're trying to decide is, do we go for it on third down or, or do we kick it? Um, my thing is, you got to be concerned. If you go in and kick it now, you're going to give the Saints back the ball with 20-plus seconds to go. By the time they run the kickoff, they've got time for two plays, and you've got Mort Anderson. And his, you know, his leg is bionic. He's, he's, he can kick them over 50. So I think, you, I think the Giants are doing the right thing. Take some more time off the clock. Rutledge goes down again, and they will put this one in the hands of Paul McFadden as the Saints use their last timeout with 24 seconds left. McFadden on the season, 12 out of 14. He has hit one out of one tonight. He's been a great find for this club. When Allegra got hurt, they signed McFadden. You know what's interesting? You see very few players come over to McFadden and talk to him while he's on the sidelines in this situation. And, and it's just, the players just, you know, they just want to leave him alone. Let the man go into his own world and leave him alone. And, and then if he makes it, everybody comes around him. And if he misses it, it's the same thing. Leave him alone. Just nobody wants to talk to him. Kickers are supposed to be in their own world anyhow. They are. I haven't met a kicker yet that, you know, they call themselves football players, but, you know, they, uh, right now, Right now, he has the chance to earn the title of football player for his team. This will be a 35-yard field goal attempt. Joe Fields is the center. Hostetler is on the hole. And it's good. So close to that left upright. But Paul McFadden out of Youngstown State got it through. And with 21 seconds left, the Giants are up by one. Boy, he rooted that baby through. Jumping to the right, and he blew body English to bring that one home. Taylor and Bavaro on the sideline. One has been so evident, the other has been invisible. And Bill Parcells, he's leaning too. He's leaning. Now he's looking. And here's that smile. Well, they wanted this one so badly after the crusher against Philadelphia a week ago. A game they thought they had won. That's true. And it, like, you know, they lose by one point uh, to San Francisco. Uh, both Philadelphia games have, have been real tough tough contest for him this is a game when you go into it you lose your starting quarterback you lose one of your star linebackers your running game has been zilch all year and you're going up against a quality quality football team in New Orleans Saints they will be in the playoffs I believe somehow some way the Saints will be in the playoffs and this is the kind of a, uh, a job that Jim Moore can do he can take his team back this is part of the growth of the New Orleans Saints this I still think the Saints will win the division 
three weeks to find out. Yeah. I wouldn't Giants. be surprised. I mean, it, you know, you're looking at that St. San Francisco game now. I'm sure those 49ers are sitting there saying, hey, we did it last Monday. Now we're in the race. Uh, at least now they're back in the hunt. 21 seconds left. The Saints with no timeouts and virtually no hope. Line drive kick taken by Atkins across the 20, 30, 35 yard line. 16 seconds to go. Remember, Anderson has tremendous range on that leg. What you do now is you drop your safeties back deep enough and you tell them, make sure at 20 yards, I don't want anybody going past you. Okay? Now, if he gets to, if he picks up 20 yards, he's looking at a 62 yarder, Mike. If they can hit an out pattern and stop the clock, they, they've got the best weapon, I think the best kicker in football, the best weapon uh, at this situation. So uh, it ain't over till it's over. Somebody said that once. Yes, he did. 16 seconds left, and Anderson indoors on artificial turf could make it from 62. A bear floats it sideline incomplete. It was intended for Robert Clark. Harry Williams was out there in the coverage. 11 seconds to go. I'll tell you something. If, if the receiver runs the corner pattern instead of an out pattern, that's a completion at the 40-yard line. That was an opportunity right there on that pass pattern. Seven seconds left. I think they have to come back with the same route. They have to run a corner pattern and try and get the receiver downfield and out of bounds. A bear steps up, floats a deep sideline, up for grabs. <laughs> Almost caught inside the 20. Lonzel Hill appeared to get a hand on it. Three seconds left. And now the only thing he can do is throw it as far as he can. This is just a jump ball. You see all the Giants at back there. Wayne Haddock's had a shot at it. Went right through his hand. This is a hard-fought contest. Jimmy Burt hoping for a little help here in, in St. Land. Can't say enough about the Giants' defense. They have just played brilliantly tonight. Last chance for Abair. Intercepted at the 20-yard line. The pass under throw. Picked up by Sheldon White. And the Giants survive 13-12 to tie for first place. And the NFC East New Orleans continues to lead in the NFC West. A tough, tough game at the Superdome tonight. Our final score from the Superdome. The Giants 13, the Saints 12. For Joe Theismann, this is Mike Patrick saying so long from the Superdome. We'll see you next Sunday from Houston. The Steelers and the Oilers right now. Let's join the ESPN Sports Center. Okay, thanks, gentlemen. A very happy Phil Simms, and while he should be a big win for the New York Giants, I'm John Saunders along with Bill Patrick, and welcome to Sports Center. A big day all around the NFL. Absolutely. Week 13 of the NFL coming up next on Sports Center, a preview of the AFC Championship. Perhaps the Cincinnati Kids show the Buffalo Bills.